The Puzzling Case of the Vanishing Musician Once upon a time in the bustling city of Melville, renowned jazz musician Samuel Sammy Malone mysteriously vanished. People flocked to his weekly gigs at the Blue Note Club, eagerly awaiting his soulful melodies. However, one fateful evening, Sammy took center stage and enchanted the crowd as usual, before vanishing without a trace. Detective Evelyn Hartman, known for her sharp intuition and unwavering determination, was assigned to unravel the enigma. She arrived at the club the following morning, greeted by the perplexed owner. Tony. Evelyn surveyed the scene meticulously, dissecting every detail in hopes of finding a clue. As the days passed, Evelyn delved into Sammy Malone's life with fervor. She met his bandmates, interviewed family and friends, and scoured every inch of his apartment. Yet, each lead seemed to lead her down a winding path of dead ends. The detective's perseverance never wavered. It was during one of her late-night stakeouts outside Malone's favorite diner that she noticed a peculiar figure lurking in the shadows. Evelyn pursued the shadowy figure, only to find herself in a hidden alley, filled with doors leading to unknown destinations. Curiosity propelled her forward, and she opened the nearest door. Much to her surprise, she found herself standing in a dimly lit jazz club, filled with an audience captivated by a pianist's fingers dancing across the keys. The pianist bore an uncanny resemblance to Sammy Malone, yet his eyes were devoid of the spark that once defined him. Evelyn approached the pianist cautiously, whispering Sammy's name. The pianist froze his eyes shifting nervously. Finally, he admitted to being Sammy, explaining that upon reaching the pinnacle of his career, an overwhelming pressure had suffocated his passion for music. The musician had grown weary of the expectations and demands placed upon him. Seeking respite, he devised an elaborate plan to disappear, determined to find solace in anonymity. Sammy assumed a new identity, playing piano in secret, far from the limelight that had once consumed him. Evelyn empathized with Sammy's struggles, recognizing the burden that fame and talent could carry. She promised to keep his secret, but only on one condition, that he would embrace his musical gift once more. It was time to reclaim his identity and share his remarkable talent with the world. Together, they orchestrated Sammy's grand comeback ensuring it would be a night Melville would never forget. The Blue Note Club was buzzing with anticipation as Sammy Malone emerged on stage once again. The enchanting sound of his music filled the air, captivating the audience and rekindling the magic that had been lost. Sammy Malone No longer burdened by expectations but fueled by his love for music, rediscovered the joy that had fueled his passion from the very beginning. And so, Detective Evelyn Hartman not only solved the mysterious vanishing of Sammy Malone, but also played a vital role in helping him rediscover himself. Their bond became a testament to the power of friendship and the transformative nature of music. The Enigmatic Case of the Vanishing Heirloom Once upon a time in the quaint little town of Crestmont, where secrets lurked behind every closed door, lived Detective Amelia Hartley. Tall and sharp-witted, with a flair for mystery-solving, she was known for her exceptional ability to unravel the most enigmatic cases that came her way. One gloomy morning, Amelia received a mysterious letter. Its sender remained anonymous, urging her to investigate the puzzling disappearance of an ancient heirloom that had been passed down through generations of the secret of Hawthorne family. The missing treasure. A priceless necklace adorned with rare jewels had vanished into thin air from the Hawthorne mansion during a lavish masquerade ball the night before. Intrigued by the strange circumstances surrounding this peculiar case, Amelia set out to unravel the truth. As she entered the Grand Hawthorne estate, she was welcomed by the family's enigmatic patriarch, Mr. Reginald Hawthorne, whose melancholy eyes revealed decades of hidden secrets. Amelia began her investigation by carefully examining the crime scene, the opulent ballroom. Filled with flickering candlelight and echoes of laughter from the night before. The space now seemingly devoid of any evidence was a testament to the elusive nature of the thief. With each step forward, Amelia encountered a trail of cryptic clues left intentionally along her path. 
Deciphering these riddles required a keen eye and quick thinking. She delved deep into the Hawthorne family history, unearthing long-buried secrets that seemed intertwined with the stolen necklace. As the days turned into weeks, Amelia interviewed each family member and scrutinized their alibis. Her gentle manner and empathetic nature encouraged even the most reticent individuals to reveal their darkest secrets, bringing forth a web of suspicion, deceit, and unresolved grudges within the Hawthorne dynasty. Amidst her tireless pursuit of truth, Amelia formed an unexpected bond with Emma Hawthorne, the youngest daughter of the family. Emma, too, possessed a natural curiosity and a desire to uncover the hidden truths that plagued her family's legacy. Together, they explored the labyrinthine corridors of the mansion, unearthing forgotten passages and concealed rooms. After countless sleepless nights, Amelia pieced together the puzzle, revealing a complex conspiracy aimed at destroying the unity of the Hawthorne family. She confronted each suspect, unveiling their motives and exposing their devious plans. Finally, on a stormy night filled with tension and revelation, Amelia gathered the entire Hawthorne family in the grand ballroom. With all eyes upon her, she reconciled the stolen necklace's whereabouts by revealing its hiding place, an innocuous painting hanging on the wall, concealing a secret compartment. In the end, the true thief was unmasked, a former trusted employee who had harbored a deep-seated resentment towards the Hawthorne family. As the stolen heirloom was returned to its rightful place, the Hawthorns were overcome with relief and gratitude, acknowledging Detective Amelia Hartley for her meticulous work and unwavering determination. With the case finally closed, Crestmont resumed its peaceful existence as Detective Amelia Hartley bid farewell to the Hawthorns, leaving behind a lasting legacy of justice and compassion. And so concluded the enigmatic case of the vanishing heirloom, a testament to the power of perseverance, trust, and the triumph of good over evil in the face of adversity. The Enigma of the Moonlit Manor Once upon a moonlit night, in the small town of Willowbrook, there lived a renowned detective named Arthur Rutherford. He was known for his astute observation skills, unwavering determination, and his love for solving perplexing mysteries. It was this reputation that led a worried young woman named Amelia to seek his assistance. Amelia's family owned a majestic manor on the outskirts of town. The manor had been in their possession for generations, but recently it had become plagued by strange occurrences. Every night, as the clock struck midnight, eerie sounds echoed throughout the halls, followed by a mysterious glow emanating from one particular room, a room that had been locked for decades. Intrigued by the peculiar nature of the case, Arthur promptly traveled to the manor to investigate. As he approached the grand front entrance, he noticed the family gathered anxiously, awaiting his arrival. Among them was Amelia, a petite and determined young woman with emerald eyes that held both fear and hope. Arthur expressed understanding and empathy towards Amelia, assuring her that he would find the truth behind the enigma that haunted her home. With Amelia as his guide, he began to explore the manor, examining every nook and cranny, searching for any clues that might reveal the source of the mysterious happenings. As he delved deeper into the past of the manor, Arthur uncovered secrets long buried. He discovered that the locked room, hidden behind an intricately carved oak door, once belonged to Amelia's great-grandfather, an eccentric inventor obsessed with the mysteries of the cosmos. Arthur pieced together the connection between the inexplicable glow and the midnight disturbances, realizing that they were linked to a secret project Amelia's great-grandfather had been working on, a device designed to harness the power of the moon. Determined Arthur spent countless hours deciphering cryptic journals, studying intricate blueprints, and experimenting with unfinished notes left behind by the late inventor. Gradually, the pieces of the puzzle came together, leading him to a hidden chamber deep within the manor. Inside, Arthur discovered a beautifully crafted telescope aimed at the night sky. Suspended from the ceiling was a contraption, a mechanical moon suspended in midair, radiating an otherworldly glow. It was this mystical invention that caused the strange occurrences plaguing the manor. With the truth revealed, Arthur devised a plan to deactivate the device and bring an end to the unsettling disturbances. 
He carefully dismantled the intricate machinery, feeling a sense of awe and reverence for Amelia's great-grandfather's genius. Despite the unintended consequences his creation had brought upon the family. As the final piece of the machine was removed, the manor fell silent. The glow faded, replaced by the comforting embrace of darkness. Arthur assured Amelia and her family that their home was finally free from the haunting presence of the moonlit enigma. With gratitude in her eyes, Amelia thanked Arthur for his unwavering determination, guidance, and understanding throughout the investigation. As he bid farewell to the family, Arthur couldn't help but feel a sense of fulfillment, an indescribable joy that came from unraveling a mystery and restoring peace where there was once uncertainty. And so, as the moon retreated into the night, taking its secrets with it, Arthur walked into the distance, ready to embark on new adventures. He knew that no matter how many mysteries awaited him, his gentle and patient approach would always guide him towards the truth, solving enigmas that others considered unsolvable. The Mysterious Diary It was a bright and sunny day in the city of New York. Detective Jackson was sitting in his office, staring at a pile of case files. He was a seasoned detective with over 25 years of experience, but this case had him stumped. It was a long-standing mystery that had been unsolved for years. The case involved a wealthy businessman, Mr. Charles, who had disappeared without a trace. His wife had hired detectives to investigate, but no one had been able to find any clues as to where he had gone. As Jackson looked through the file, he noticed something strange, there was a mention of a diary that had belonged to Mr. Charles. The diary was said to contain all of his most personal thoughts and secrets. Jackson couldn't help but be intrigued by it. He knew that if he could get his hands on that diary, he might finally be able to solve the case. After some digging, Jackson discovered that the diary had been passed down to a distant relative of Mr. Charles. The relative was living in a remote village in Ireland, so Jackson packed his bags and headed off to find her. When he arrived in the village, he was struck by how quaint and peaceful it was. He found the relative's house and knocked on the door. A young woman opened the door and Jackson introduced himself. The woman seemed nervous and hesitant to speak with him, but after some persuasion, she finally allowed him inside. Jackson searched the house and eventually found the diary hidden away in a locked drawer. He eagerly flipped through the pages, hoping to find some clue as to where Mr. Charles had gone. What he found, however, was much more shocking. The diary contained not only Mr. Charles's thoughts and secrets, but also evidence of his involvement in a large-scale corruption scandal. It seemed that Mr. Charles had fled not because of some personal issue, but because he was on the run from the law. Jackson was stunned. He knew that this information could change everything. He contacted the authorities and shared what he had discovered. It wasn't long before Mr. Charles was apprehended and brought to justice. As for the diary, it became a valuable piece of evidence in Mr. Charles's trial. Jackson was hailed as a hero and was awarded for his contribution to solving the case. But he knew that he couldn't take all the credit. Without that mysterious diary, the case may have remained unsolved forever. The Elusive Mastermind Once upon a moonlit night in the bustling city of Elysium, Detective Lucas stepped out onto the rain-soaked streets. Leading a dedicated team of investigators, he was known for his tenacity and uncanny ability to solve even the most perplexing cases. It all began with a series of daring bank heists that baffled authorities. The elusive mastermind behind these audacious crimes had left no trace of evidence, no fingerprints, and no witnesses. The city was gripped by fear as the robberies continued. Each heist carried out with meticulous precision. Detective Lucas studied every detail, poring over the crime scenes, searching for any small clue that could unravel the mystery. Hours turned into days, days into weeks, and still, the answer eluded him. But the undeterred detective refused to give up. As the rain poured down, Detective Lucas retreated to his dimly lit office, surrounded by walls adorned with conspiracy theories and newspaper clippings. 
He pondered over every connection, racking his brain for a breakthrough. A late-night phone call interrupted his thoughts. It was an anonymous tip, claiming to have information crucial to solving the case. With renewed hope, Detective Lucas followed the lead to an abandoned warehouse on the outskirts of town. The moment he stepped inside, the door slammed shut behind him, trapping him in a labyrinth of dark corridors. Realizing he had walked into a trap, Detective Lucas pressed on, his heart racing. Muffled voices echoed around him, revealing the presence of others. Deeper into the maze, Lucas found himself face to face with the mastermind, a cunning and enigmatic figure known only as the Phantom. Time seemed to stand still as they locked eyes, the atmosphere heavy with intrigue. The Phantom offered Detective Lucas a proposition, if he could uncover the identity of the Phantom within 24 hours, the Phantom would turn himself in, putting an end to the crimes that had plagued the city. The detective accepted the challenge, knowing that failure was not an option. With every hour that passed, Detective Lucas delved deeper into the case, racing against the clock. Guided by his intuition, he pieced together fragments of information, unearthing the truth hidden beneath layers of deception. As dawn approached, Detective Lucas stood on the precipice of discovery. He confronted the phantom with unwavering determination, revealing a web of interconnected motives leading to one man, one whose affinity for elaborate schemes had driven him to orchestrate the perfect crime spree. In a dramatic showdown, Detective Lucas outsmarted the phantom, exposing his true identity to the world. The city rejoiced as the reign of fear came to an end, thanks to the relentless efforts of one detective unwilling to surrender. The name of Detective Lucas echoed throughout Elysium as a symbol of justice and resilience. Though his journey had been long and filled with obstacles, he had proven that even the most elusive mastermind could be brought to justice with patience, courage, and an unwavering commitment to the truth. And so, Detective Lucas continued his work, ready to face any challenge that crossed his path, always striving to protect his beloved city from those who sought to manipulate, deceive, and disrupt the peace. The Case of the Missing Heirloom Private investigator James Monroe had been in the business for over 20 years, but he had never encountered a case quite like this. He received a call from an elderly woman named Margaret whose beloved family heirloom, a diamond necklace that had been passed down for generations, had gone missing. Margaret had locked the necklace away in her safe every night for the past 20 years, but when she went to retrieve it for her granddaughter's wedding, she found the safe empty. The only clue left behind was a small note that read, I have what belongs to me. James started his investigation by questioning Margaret's family and friends who had access to the house. All of them denied knowing anything about the missing necklace. However, during his investigation, James discovered that Margaret's family had been feuding over inheritance for years, and the diamond necklace was worth a substantial amount of money. A few days later, James received a call from a man who claimed to have information about the missing necklace. He arranged to meet with James at an abandoned warehouse on the outskirts of town. As soon as James arrived, he was ambushed by two men who demanded that he hand over all of his belongings. James managed to pull out his gun and threatened to call the police. The men backed down. But just as James was about to leave, he saw a glimpse of something that caught his eye. It was the diamond necklace, hidden in a small box in the corner of the warehouse. James quickly grabbed the necklace and called the police. He learned that the two men who had ambushed him were hired by one of Margaret's family members who had stolen the necklace in hopes of selling it for a large sum of money. Thanks to James' detective work, the necklace was returned to Margaret, and the culprit was brought to justice. Margaret was beyond grateful and thanked James for his hard work and dedication in solving the case of her missing heirloom. The Enigmatic Case of the Banished Heirloom Once upon a time, in the quaint town of Crestview, there lived a renowned detective named Arthur Harris. Known for his sharp mind and relentless pursuit of justice, he was often sought after to solve the most complex cases. One day, a distressed lady named Mrs. Eleanor Cooper arrived at his office, desperately seeking his assistance. Mrs. 
Cooper's family had possessed a magnificent heirloom, an exquisite diamond necklace that had been passed down through generations. However, it mysteriously vanished from their home just two days ago. With tears streaming down her face, Mrs. Cooper pleaded with Detective Harris to find the precious necklace, explaining how it held immense sentimental value to her and her family. Determined to help the distraught woman, Detective Harris embarked on a quest to unravel the enigma surrounding the lost heirloom. He began by thoroughly investigating every inch of the Cooper residence, searching for any hidden clues or potential suspects. In the process, he meticulously interviewed each member of the household, trying to unravel their connections to the necklace. As the detective dug deeper, he discovered a web of secrets, lies, and hidden motives among the members of the Cooper family. There were whispers of financial struggles, jealousy, and even an estranged cousin who had recently returned to town. Detective Harris patiently listened, never allowing his frustration to taint his ability to comprehend the puzzle before him. Many nights were spent poring over dusty old books in the library, tracing the history of the heirloom necklace. The detective realized the long-standing importance of the piece and how its theft could affect the Cooper lineage for generations to come. Determined to restore justice and put an end to the suffering, he persevered. With his sagacity and wit, Detective Harris began piecing together the fragments of the complex case. Unexpected twists and turns took him to far-flung places and introduced him to an array of peculiar characters. Each encounter brought him closer to discovering the truth behind the vanished heirloom. Finally, after weeks of relentless investigation, the detective summoned all the key players to the Grand Hall of Crestview Manor. With the entire Cooper family gathered nervously before him, Detective Harris revealed his findings with clarity and precision. He unveiled a surprising revelation that sent shockwaves through the room. The actual thief was none other than Mrs. Eleanor Cooper herself. Overwhelmed by her family's financial troubles, she had succumbed to temptation, believing the necklace could solve all their problems. However, consumed by guilt, she had returned it, desperately seeking solace and forgiveness. In that moment, amidst tears and remorse, Mrs. Cooper confessed her actions, understanding the gravity of her mistake. Detective Harris, ever the gentle soul, compassionately reminded her that we all make errors in judgment, but emphasized the importance of redemption and learning from our missteps. As the story unfolded, it became clear that beneath the grandeur of a detective's role lay the essence of empathy and understanding. Detective Harris not only solved the case of the vanished heirloom, but also helped heal a fractured family, returning harmony and forgiveness to their lives. And so, the enigmatic case of the vanished heirloom came to a close, leaving behind a lingering lesson in compassion and forgiveness. Detective Arthur Harris once again proved that his perseverance, patience, and gentle nature could unravel even the most intricate mysteries, reminding us all that true justice encompasses not only solving crimes but also mending broken hearts. The Enigmatic Puzzle Once upon a time, in a small, idyllic town named Riverton, a long-standing mystery had perplexed the residents for years. Known as the Enigmatic Puzzle, it had become a local legend, captivating the imagination of both young and old alike. The story goes that hidden within the town was an ancient artifact, said to possess unimaginable power. Many had tried to unveil its secrets, but none had succeeded. Enter Detective Benjamin Hartley, renowned for his unmatched wit and unraveled cases. Upon hearing about the enigmatic puzzle, he knew he had to take on the challenge. He arrived in Riverton late one evening, his curiosity stirring with every step he took through its winding streets. The townspeople were wary at first, unsure of whether to trust this outsider. Until they saw the friendly gleam in Benjamin's eyes and felt his genuine desire to solve their long-standing conundrum. Slowly, they began to share their knowledge of the puzzle, each person offering a small piece to the detective's growing collection. Benjamin discovered that the artifact had once belonged to an ancient society, known as the Regaliums, who believed in the delicate balance between light and shadow. With this newfound information, 
he started searching for hidden symbols and clues scattered throughout the town, trusting that each detail would provide him with a vital clue. Days turned into weeks, but Benjamin's dedication never wavered. With the help of the townspeople, he mapped out the locations where the symbols appeared, eventually forming a pattern that led to a dilapidated, forgotten library. Dust-covered books lined the shelves, their pages suffused with age-old knowledge. One particular book caught Benjamin's attention, an ancient tome written in a forgotten language. Through sheer perseverance, he deciphered its meaning. Discovering detailed instructions on how to unlock the enigmatic puzzle's true potential. Following the instructions, Benjamin embarked on a treacherous journey, solving intricate riddles and navigating through secret passages. With each step, the weight of anticipation grew heavier, both for him and the residents of Riverton. Finally, at the heart of a hidden chamber, where sunlight barely touched, stood the enigmatic puzzle, a mesmerizing combination of interlocking gears and intricate mechanisms. As Benjamin carefully turned the gears, the room filled with a soft hum, resonating with the power it held. In that moment, the townspeople gathered behind Benjamin, their faith unwavering. Eyes filled with hope, they watched as the enigmatic puzzle unveiled its ultimate secret. The artifact emitted a blinding light, revealing a message engraved within its core, in unity lies true strength. Realizing that the power they sought existed in cooperation and empathy, the residents of Riverton embraced this newfound wisdom. Their once divided town united, becoming an epitome of harmony for generations to come. Detective Benjamin Hartley, having solved the enigmatic puzzle, bid farewell to Riverton. Their paths had crossed for a brief moment, intertwining forever in a shared memory of triumph over adversity. Though the mystery had been unraveled, Benjamin's legacy of friendship and unity remained etched in the hearts of the people he had touched. And so, Riverton flourished, guided by the enigmatic puzzle's timeless message. Reminding all who encountered it that true strength lay not in the pursuit of power, but in the power of unity. The Missing Jewel Heist It was a cold winter morning when Detective James received a call from the police department. There was a report of a missing jewel heist, and it was not your average burglary case. This was a high-profile theft that could make or break James' career. He arrived at the scene of the crime, the famous Diamond Museum. As he entered the museum, he noticed that the glass displays were shattered and the jewels were missing. James interviewed the security guards on duty that night and found out that the alarms were deactivated before the robbery took place. The museum was equipped with the highest level of security systems in the city, and this was not an easy job for someone to pull off. James spent countless hours investigating the crime scene, questioning witnesses, and reviewing the surveillance footage. As the days passed, James still had no leads on the culprits. That was until he caught a break. A man named Jack, who was a known criminal, was caught trying to sell the stolen jewels to a black market dealer. James arrested Jack and brought him in for questioning. Jack denied being involved in the heist and claimed that he was only selling the jewels for a friend. James didn't believe him and decided to dig deeper. After interrogating Jack again, he finally broke and gave up the name of his accomplice, a woman named Eva. Eva was a cunning thief who had been planning the heist for months. She had carefully studied the museum's security system to find the perfect time for the heist. James tracked down Eva, and she was caught red-handed with the jewels still in her possession. Eva confessed to the crime and revealed that she had a partner who helped her deactivate the alarms. She refused to give up the name of her partner, but James was determined to solve the case. He dug deeper and found evidence that led him to the partner, a former employee of the Diamond Museum. The employee, who had been fired from his job, wanted revenge and agreed to help Eva get inside the museum. In the end, justice prevailed, and both Eva and her accomplice were arrested and charged with the missing jewel heist. James was praised for his excellent detective skills, and his career soared to new heights. The Enigma of the Midnight Mansion Once upon a time in the heart of the bustling city, Detective Arthur Hastings found himself intrigued by a peculiar case. 
he received a cryptic letter from an anonymous source, tipping him off about a mysterious occurrence at the Midnight Mansion. Eager to unravel this enigma, Detective Hastings set off under the moonlit sky to the mansion's eerie location. The mansion stood tall and intimidating, its dark facade casting an ominous shadow over the surrounding neighborhood. As he entered the grand entrance hall, Detective Hastings discovered a group of guests huddled together, whispering anxiously. Their eyes widened with a mixture of fear and curiosity, revealing that something inexplicable had transpired. The detective took a deep breath and approached the nervous mansion owner, Mr. Samuel Blackwood. With a calm demeanor, Detective Hastings asked for an account of the strange events that had unfolded. Mr. Blackwood explained that every night, at the stroke of midnight, a ghostly figure would wander the halls of the mansion, vanishing into thin air before anyone could approach it. Guests reported feeling an eerie presence, hearing faint whispers, and seeing flickering lights throughout the house. Determined to solve the mystery, Detective Hastings began his meticulous investigation. He interrogated the guests one by one, searching for any clues that might shed light on the ghostly encounters. However, despite his efforts, the testimonies yielded minimal information, leaving him with more questions than answers. As days turned into weeks, Detective Hastings spent countless nights observing and studying the Midnight Mansion. He meticulously documented every detail and meticulously examined every inch of the old walls. In his tireless pursuit of the truth, he stumbled upon a hidden passage leading to the mansion's basement. Descending into the abyss, he discovered a forgotten secret room containing old journals and dusty artifacts. The journals belonged to a renowned magician named Victor Delacroix, who had vanished mysteriously from the mansion a century ago. With each page turned, the story of Victor Delacroix unraveled. He was a master illusionist who used his skills to create spectacles that left audiences spellbound. However, his final performance at Midnight Mansion went horribly wrong, resulting in his untimely disappearance. Eager to bring closure to this haunting tale, Detective Hastings embarked on an audacious plan. He decided to reconstruct Delacroix's last performance, hoping to summon the spirit of the magician and communicate with him from beyond. On the stroke of midnight, as the guests gathered with bated breath, Detective Hastings performed the final act of Victor Delacroix's show. Smoke billowed, mirrors reflected mesmerizing illusions, and the air crackled with anticipation. And then, in a moment of dazzling spectacle, the ghostly figure materialized. Standing center stage. Detective Hastings, undeterred, engaged in a conversation with the apparition. Through a series of questions and responses, he pieced together the truth. Victor Delacroix had not perished that fateful night but had orchestrated his own disappearance. Driven by a desire for a fresh start, he had taken on a new identity and continued his passion for magic elsewhere, hidden from the world. Though Victor Delacroix's deception had initially spooked the Midnight Mansion's inhabitants, it was relief that swept through them once the truth was revealed. The magic of the mansion was restored, devoid of ghostly apparitions and haunted whispers. With the case finally solved, Detective Arthur Hastings bid farewell to Midnight Mansion, leaving behind a trail of mystery and enchantment. The Midnight Mansion would forever be remembered as a place where illusion and reality blurred, and where secrets were uncovered beneath the watchful eye of the moon. The Enigma of the Midnight Murders Once upon a time, in the small picturesque town of Riverton, Detective Benjamin Reynolds found himself embroiled in a tangled web of mysterious events. It all began when a series of peculiar murders occurred, leaving the entire town gripped with fear and confusion. The first victim was Mr. Arthur Thompson, a renowned art collector known for his eccentric taste in the bazaar. He was found lifeless in his drawing room, surrounded by unusual sculptures and paintings that seemed to hold secrets of their own. Days later, Mrs. Eleanor Hamilton, a local librarian, met an equally untimely demise. Her body was discovered in the library, next to shelves filled with books on ancient spells and enigmatic manuscripts. With each passing murder, the clues became more perplexing. 
Detective Reynolds tirelessly investigated, questioning witnesses, and studying the crime scenes. But the pieces of the puzzle refused to fit together. The townsfolk grew increasingly fearful, locking themselves indoors at night, in fear of becoming the next target. Detective Reynolds knew he needed a fresh perspective to crack the case. He reached out to the renowned psychic, Madame Evangeline, who claimed she could see beyond the physical realm. Skeptical yet desperate, Detective Reynolds welcomed her assistance. Madame Evangeline arrived promptly with her crystal ball and tarot cards in tow. In a dimly lit room, she closed her eyes, concentrating on the energy lingering in the air. Slowly, the psychic's face contorted in pain, as visions of violence and darkness clouded her mind. She warned Detective Reynolds of an ancient curse that had befallen the town of Riverton. Centuries ago, a powerful sorcerer had been wronged. And in his vengeance, he vowed that every hundred years, a bloodbath would occur, until justice prevailed. As the detective delved deeper into the town's history, he discovered the tale of the long-forgotten sorcerer, who once resided in Riverton. Researching ancient texts and spending countless nights in the town's archives, he uncovered a hidden ritual that could break the curse. With the help of Madame Evangeline's visions and the lingering whispers from the victim's spirits, Detective Reynolds followed the cryptic instructions of the ritual. He gathered a select group of Riverton's bravest souls, including a historian, a professor of folklore, and a skilled locksmith. Together, they ventured into the depths of an abandoned mansion, which was rumored to be the cursed sorcerer's former abode. In a candlelit chamber, they performed the intricate ritual, invoking forgotten deities and reciting ancient incantations, determined to end the cycle of unspeakable horrors. Suddenly, as they completed the final step of the ritual, the air crackled with energy. A blinding light engulfed the room and when it subsided, they found themselves standing in front of a magnificent statue. It was the sorcerer himself, forever petrified as punishment for his wickedness. The curse had finally been lifted, and with it, peace returned to Riverton. The townsfolk rejoiced, grateful to Detective Benjamin Reynolds and his unlikely band of allies for their bravery and perseverance. With the enigma of the midnight murders solved, Riverton thrived once again. Its citizens forever grateful to the detective who had brought an end to their darkest hour. And as for Detective Reynolds, he continued to protect and serve the community his name forever etched in the history books alongside the tales of the brave and the extraordinary. The Enigma of the Crimson Rose Once upon a time, in the bustling city of Havenridge, there was a renowned detective named Evelyn Chase. With her piercing blue eyes, sharp wit, and meticulous attention to detail, she had solved countless mysteries that left others scratching their heads. One gloomy morning, Evelyn received a peculiar letter from an anonymous sender. The letter contained nothing but a cryptic message, the answer lies beneath the crimson rose. Intrigued by this enigmatic note, Evelyn embarked on a thrilling investigation. Her first stop was the grand estate of Lord Percival Sinclair, a wealthy businessman known for his love of rare and exotic flowers. As Evelyn wandered through the lavish gardens, she noticed a solitary crimson rose nestled amidst a sea of vibrant blooms. She approached the flower cautiously bending down to inspect it. To her surprise, beneath the crimson rose, Evelyn discovered a hidden compartment concealed within the earth. Inside, she found a key, intricately designed with a crest bearing the initials TH. Driven by her insatiable curiosity, Evelyn delved into the archives and discovered the initials belonged to Thomas Hawthorne, a former renowned botanist who mysteriously vanished years ago. Determined to uncover the truth, Evelyn set out to find anyone connected to Hawthorne. Her search led her to the Whispering Ivy Inn, a cozy establishment tucked away in a quiet corner of the city. Inside, she met Jonathan Harper, an elderly man who had befriended Hawthorne during their botany studies. Jonathan revealed that Thomas had been working on a groundbreaking invention capable of revolutionizing the world of horticulture. Evelyn's next clue took her to a secret laboratory hidden beneath a decaying greenhouse. There, she discovered Thomas Hawthorne, 
still alive, but imprisoned by an unknown antagonist seeking to steal his invention. With her keen mind and resourcefulness, Evelyn managed to free Hawthorne and uncover the identities of those responsible for his disappearance. As the pieces of the puzzle fell into place, Evelyn unraveled a web of betrayal and greed. It turned out that Lord Percival Sinclair, driven by jealousy over Hawthorne's brilliance, had orchestrated his kidnapping to claim his invention as his own. However, his plans were foiled by Evelyn, who skillfully gathered evidence against him. With the truth exposed, justice prevailed, and Lord Percival Sinclair was held accountable for his crimes. Thomas Hawthorne's invention, now protected by Evelyn, was recognized as a groundbreaking contribution to the field of botany, forever immortalizing his name. As for Evelyn Chase, she continued her journey as a detective, ever vigilant in her pursuit of truth and justice. The enigma of the Crimson Rose had been solved, but many mysteries awaited her, beckoning her to unravel their secrets and bring resolution to those in need. And so, the indomitable Evelyn Chase began her next adventure, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead, armed with nothing but her intellect, compassion, and unwavering determination. The End the Enigmatic Case of the Missing Masterpiece Once upon a time in the bustling city of Veridosha, a long and winding detective story began. It all started with the most renowned art piece in existence, a priceless painting known as The Whispering Secrets. This masterpiece had captivated the hearts and minds of art enthusiasts worldwide for centuries. But on a fateful evening, it mysteriously disappeared from the Veridosha Museum, leaving detectives and curators bewildered. In the heart of the investigation was Detective Evelyn Marshall, an extraordinarily intuitive sleuth who possessed a unique talent for deciphering complex puzzles. With her keen eye for detail and unwavering determination, she vowed to solve this enigmatic case and bring the stolen artwork back where it belonged. As Detective Marshall delved deeper into the investigation, she uncovered a trail of curious clues leading her down a labyrinth of deceit. The initial suspect, renowned art collector Augustus van der Veer, had a reputation for acquiring rare pieces by any means necessary. However, after thorough interrogation, it became apparent that van der Veer was merely an innocent bystander. Undeterred, Detective Marshall tirelessly pursued her inquiries, questioning museum staff and scrutinizing camera footage. She stumbled upon a peculiar custodian named Felix, whose anxious behavior raised suspicions. Intrigued, she secretly followed him one evening and discovered an underground network of art forgers known as the Canvas Shadows. Determined to expose their nefarious activities, Detective Marshall infiltrated their secret hideout, where she discovered a collection of stolen masterpieces, including the Whispering Secrets. The forger's leader, a shrewd individual known as Eliza Thornfield, proved to be a cunning adversary. She had orchestrated this entire heist, exploiting her knowledge of the museum's vulnerabilities and employing an array of dexterous thieves. With her quick wit and endless resourcefulness, Detective Marshall devised an intricate plan to apprehend the culprits without alerting them to her presence. She called upon her trusted colleagues in law enforcement, ensuring that every exit was sealed while leaving a single, unguarded entrance. The stage was set for a climactic showdown. As the night fell and the final piece of the puzzle fell into place, Detective Marshall confronted Eliza Thornfield and her gang within the shadows of the underground lair. With her unwavering determination and exceptional deductive skills, she outmaneuvered them one by one, ultimately apprehending the entire gang. The Whispering Secrets was finally reclaimed and returned to its rightful place in the Veridosha Museum. In the aftermath of this remarkable detective work, Detective Evelyn Marshall received accolades from all corners of the art world. Her name became synonymous with unraveling the most perplexing and intricate mysteries. As for The Whispering Secrets, it remained an everlasting symbol of the indomitable spirit of justice and the triumph of truth over deception. And so, the long and winding detective story of the enigmatic case of the missing masterpiece ended.
leaving behind a legacy of relentless pursuit for justice and the recognition that even the most elusive secrets can be unraveled with patience, determination, and a touch of gentle guidance from a helpful assistant like Detective Evelyn Marshall. The Enigma of the Golden Key Once upon a rainy evening in the bustling city of Riverdale, Detective Evelyn Collins found herself immersed in yet another puzzle. Known for her unwavering resolve and keen intellect, she was assigned the daunting task of unveiling an enigma that had confounded all who dared to decipher it. The case started with the curious appearance of a golden key, seemingly untouched by time, mysteriously left on the doorstep of the local ancient relics museum. Detective Collins's investigation began at the museum, accompanied by her trusty partner, Officer James Mitchell. The curator revealed that no item in their collection seemed to correspond to the golden key, raising suspicion as to its origin. The only clue they had was an anonymous letter sent to the museum director, claiming that the key held the key to something far greater than anyone could imagine. Determined to unravel the mystery, Detective Collins delved into the depths of Riverdale's history. After days spent combing through old archives, she discovered a long-forgotten tale about a prominent family, the Whitmores, who mysteriously vanished centuries ago. Legend whispered that they possessed unimaginable wealth and hidden treasures, waiting to be discovered by someone worthy. With this newfound lead, Detective Collins set out to find any living descendants of the Whitmore family. Her search led her to an old house situated on the outskirts of the city. She knocked on the door, and to her surprise, was greeted by a fragile-looking elderly woman named Abigail Whitmore. Abigail invited Detective Collins inside, revealing a treasure trove of memorabilia from her family's illustrious past. She shared stories from her youth, tales of the family's rise to power, and their subsequent disappearance. When shown the golden key, Abigail gasped, recognizing it as the missing link to her family's greatest secret. As the night wore on, Abigail recounted the legend passed down through generations. The key, she explained, was a gateway to a hidden vault. Guarded by fantastical mechanisms and riddles designed to keep away trespassers. Only someone who possessed the utmost determination, wit, and pure-hearted intentions could unlock the vault's secrets. Detective Collins and Abigail embarked on a perilous journey. Following a series of cryptic clues that led them through treacherous terrain, all the while being pursued by unscrupulous treasure hunters. They deciphered ancient symbols, solved complex puzzles, and unraveled countless mysteries along the way. Their unwavering determination and friendship became their greatest assets in the face of danger. Finally, after days on this quest, the duo stood before an ornate, gilded door deep within an abandoned cavern. With bated breath, Detective Collins inserted the golden key into the lock. And as it turned with a resounding click, the door swung open, revealing a breathtaking sight. Stacks of gold coins, gleaming jewels, and priceless artifacts adorned the room, reflecting the magnificence of the Whitmore legacy. Overwhelmed by the sheer beauty and grandeur, Detective Collins and Abigail knew that their ultimate reward lay not in material wealth, but in the priceless bond they had formed throughout their journey. They had uncovered a truth far greater than any treasure the power of perseverance, trust, and the joy of unraveling life's greatest enigmas together. And so, the legend of the enigma of the golden key would be remembered for generations, reminding all who heard it of the transformative power of friendship, curiosity, and the relentless pursuit of truth. The Curious Case of the Whispering Manor Once upon a time in the peaceful town of Meadowbrook, a mysterious incident occurred at the Grand Whispering Manor. The owner, Mr. Charles Worthington, was found dead in his study under peculiar circumstances. The townsfolk were puzzled, and the local authorities were unable to uncover the truth behind his untimely demise. It was now up to Detective James Barnes, a renowned investigator known for his keen eye and sharp wit, to solve this long-standing mystery. With his trusty notepad and pen in hand, Detective Barnes ventured into Whispering Manor its towering facade concealing secrets within its walls. The residence seemed haunted by an eerie silence, as if the entire manor held its breath. Cobwebs dangled from the ornate chandeliers, and the air resonated with a chilling hush. 
The detective began his investigation by speaking to the late Mr. Worthington's wife, Mrs. Victoria Worthington, a woman of poise and grace. Although grief-stricken, she eagerly assisted Detective Barnes, hoping to bring justice to her husband's memory. She recounted their happy times together but confessed that their bliss had been recently shattered by unknown tensions. Next on the list was Mr. Edgar Whitaker, the butler of Whispering Manor. Known for his loyalty and dedication, Edgar was deeply attached to the Worthington family. As Detective Barnes questioned him, he noticed a fleeting expression of guilt on the butler's face. Sensing there was something more, he gently probed, and Edgar revealed that he had overheard heated arguments between Mr. Worthington and a mysterious guest over the past few weeks. Intrigued by this revelation, the detective sought out the guest known as Mr. Xavier Blackwood, a recluse who preferred solitude to socializing. Tales of his brilliance reached Detective Barnes long before his arrival at Meadowbrook. Tracking him down was no easy task. But a mysterious informant directed the detective to an abandoned shack at the outskirts of town. Inside the shack, Detective Barnes discovered Mr. Blackwood, surrounded by stacks of books and tools of his trade. The investigator had an instant connection with the eccentric genius both sharing a passion for unraveling the unknown. Mr. Blackwood revealed that he and Mr. Worthington were engaged in an intense rivalry, competing for recognition in their respective fields. This rivalry had escalated into a life-or-death confrontation, leaving Mr. Blackwood as the prime suspect. Determined to uncover the truth, Detective Barnes delved deeper into the shadows of Whispering Manor. He meticulously examined the crime scene and discovered hidden documents that hinted at a clandestine affair between Mrs. Worthington and Mr. Blackwood. As secrets unraveled, it became evident that jealousy and betrayal clouded the once harmonious lives of those involved. With all the puzzle pieces finally falling into place, Detective Barnes summoned the townsfolk to Whispering Manor's Grand Hall. One by one, he laid out the evidence revealing the intricate web of deceit that led to Mr. Worthington's tragic demise. The tension in the room was palpable, and whispers filled the air as the truth emerged from the darkness. The culprit, driven by love and consumed by envy, stood exposed. It was Mrs. Worthington who plotted her husband's untimely end, staging it as an accident to protect her secret affair. Overwhelmed with remorse, she confessed her misdeeds, hoping to find redemption in her honesty. In the end, justice prevailed. Thanks to Detective James Barnes' relentless pursuit of the truth. While the town of Meadowbrook mourned the loss of one of their own, they also celebrated their noble detective who tirelessly worked to unveil the dark secrets of Whispering Manor. And so, the curious case of the Whispering Manor came to a close leaving the townsfolk with a newfound appreciation for the importance of trust and the fragility of human emotions. Detective Barnes, forever in their hearts, continued on his quest to bring light to the darkest of mysteries. Wherever they may lie. The Enigma of the Midnight Rose Once upon a time in the city of Eldoria, renowned Detective Amelia Hart found herself entangled in a perplexing case that would test her investigative prowess to the limit. As the moon cast its silvery glow over the cobblestone streets, it illuminated the mysterious disappearance of Lady Arabella Lancaster, the heiress to the prestigious Lancaster family fortune. Lady Arabella, known for her vibrant charm and enigmatic personality, had vanished without a trace from her lavish mansion one stormy night. As word of her disappearance spread through the city, the people were filled with anxious whispers and fearful speculations. With no leads and the police force overwhelmed, the desperate call for a detective reached Amelia's ears. Determined to uncover the truth, Amelia ventured into the opulent halls of the Lancaster estate. She discovered a peculiar clue, a single crimson rose, freshly plucked, resting on a velvet cushion atop a grand piano. Intrigued by this symbol of love amidst turmoil, Amelia realized that she was dealing with more than just a simple abduction. She delved deeper into the lives of Lady Arabella's acquaintances, interviewing those closest to her. Among them was Lord Montgomery, a wealthy suitor whose desire for the Lancaster fortune had raised eyebrows. 
Then there was Mrs. Hargrove, Lady Arabella's housekeeper, known for her loyalty but harboring secrets of her own. Each interview provided a piece of the puzzle, yet none seemed to fit perfectly. As the days turned into nights, Amelia found solace in her trusted companion, Watson, an old and wise street cat. Together, they explored the labyrinthine corridors of the estate, searching for hidden passages and concealed secrets. Guided by the cat's keen instincts, Amelia discovered a concealed door leading to a clandestine chamber filled with dusty books and antiquities. Within the secret room, she uncovered a hidden diary. Its yellowed pages revealed a side of Lady Arabella unknown to the world, her aspirations, fears, and forbidden desires. Amidst the pages lay coded messages written in an elegant hand, leading Amelia to believe that the heiress had been involved in clandestine affairs that went far beyond her disappearance. Armed with this newfound knowledge, Amelia confronted Lord Montgomery and Mrs. Hargrove, forcing them to reveal their darkest secrets. A tale of betrayal, greed, and unrequited love unraveled before her as the truth behind Lady Arabella's disappearance came to light. In a dramatic climax, Amelia unearthed a complex network of deceit woven by those closest to Lady Arabella. With her relentless pursuit of justice, the detective exposed the guilty parties and ensured that they faced the consequences for their actions. At long last, Lady Arabella was found alive, held captive in a secluded hideaway. Reunited with her family, she expressed her deepest gratitude to Detective Amelia Hart the unwavering force behind her rescue. The people of Eldoria rejoiced, celebrating the triumph of justice over darkness. The story of the enigma of the Midnight Rose became legendary, inspiring other aspiring detectives to unravel the complexities of life and become agents of change in a world filled with secrets and mysteries. And as for Amelia, with Watson by her side, she continued her journey, navigating the shadows and shedding light on the truth one case at a time. The Mysterious Melody Once upon a time in the bustling city of Soulhaven, Detective Benjamin Blackwood found himself caught up in a perplexing case that would test his skills like never before. A renowned violinist named Evelyn Monroe had been reported missing, leaving behind nothing but an empty apartment and a haunting melody that echoed through the streets. Detective Blackwood knitted his brows as he listened to the enchanting tune that seemed to call out for answers. Determined to solve this musical enigma, he set out to gather clues from those who knew Evelyn best. Her closest friend, Marion Davies, shared that Evelyn had been working tirelessly on a new composition, one she believed would change the world of classical music forever. As Benjamin delved deeper into Evelyn's life, he encountered Philip Harris, a rival violinist envious of her talent. Philip confessed, with a hint of jealousy in his voice, how Evelyn's brilliance haunted him, motivating him to push his own limits. But he swore he had no part in her disappearance. Next on Benjamin's list was Theodore West, a wealthy benefactor who had taken an interest in Evelyn's career. With a heavy sigh, Theodore admitted to having strongly opposed her decision to present her masterpiece to the world. Yet, he insisted he had nothing to do with her vanishing act. In search of more leads, Detective Blackwood turned his attention to Evelyn's musical mentor, Maestro Giuseppe Russo. Beneath the dimly lit room filled with musical instruments, the maestro revealed a hidden secret. Evelyn possessed an exceptional talent not only for playing the violin but also for deciphering hidden codes within musical notes. She had uncovered something extraordinary, the maestro whispered, something that people would kill for. The detective's mind raced as he put the pieces together. Hidden within Evelyn's elusive melody lay a coded message that revealed a long-lost treasure, coveted by many. The stakes were high, and it became clear that someone would stop at nothing to claim it. With time running out, Detective Blackwood organized an exquisite concert to unveil Evelyn's unfinished composition to the world. Orchestra members, music enthusiasts, and suspects alike filled the opulent hall, their eyes searching, their hearts pounding. As Evelyn's melody filled the air, harmonizing with the anxiety in the room, a sharp-eyed viewer noticed a peculiar pattern emerging within the notes. 
It was the key to the mystery, a message indicating the exact location of the hidden treasure. Panicked whispers spread like wildfire through the crowd. But Detective Benjamin Blackwood remained calm. He knew that among the charmed audience lay the person responsible for Evelyn's disappearance. With the final note of the performance, the room plunged into darkness. Amidst the chaos, Benjamin felt a hand grab his arm. It was Marion Davies. Evelyn's closest friend, her eyes beseeching him for help. You have to save her, she pleaded. In an instant, the lights flickered back on, revealing Evelyn Monroe bound and gagged at the center of the stage. A masked figure stood beside her, holding a knife precariously close to her trembling throat. The crowd gasped in horror. Detective Blackwood drew upon his intuition, carefully observing the people around him. His gaze stopped at Theodore West, whose hand trembled ever so slightly, betraying his nervousness. The detective's instincts told him that Theodore was the culprit. With unwavering confidence, Benjamin Blackwood confronted Theodore, forcing him to relinquish his weapon and release Evelyn from his grip. As Theodore was apprehended, he confessed to his desperate act. Motivated by greed and a longing to claim the hidden treasure for himself. In the end, justice prevailed, and Evelyn Monroe was freed from her captor's clutches. With the mystery solved, the haunting melody written by talented hands would forever be remembered as the symphony that unraveled a hidden world. Detective Benjamin Blackwood returned to his office, mindful of the dangers concealed in even the sweetest of melodies. The case had left its mark reminding him of the deceptive nature of desires and of the lengths some would go to fulfill them. But through it all, Detective Blackwood remained a gentle guardian of justice, ready to face any challenge that came his way, ever guided by the echoes of the mysterious melody. The Case of the Missing Diamond The sun was setting over the city as Detective Jones walked up to the grand estate of Mr. and Mrs. Harrison. He was there to investigate the theft of their prized possession, a large diamond that had been in the family for over 100 years. The Harrisons were a wealthy couple, but they were in shambles after the robbery. Detective Jones walked into the house and immediately surveyed the area. He took mental note of every small detail and talked to every member of the household, including the maid and butler. Everyone seemed genuine in their sorrow for the loss of the diamond, but Detective Jones knew better. He could feel a sense of unease in the house, as if someone was trying to hide something from him. He spent the entire night sifting through clues, examining fingerprints, and dusting for any signs of forced entry. But there was nothing. No fingerprints, no broken windows, no signs of a struggle. It was as if the thief had just walked in and taken the diamond. Days went by with no leads, but Detective Jones refused to give up. He wasn't going to let this case go unsolved. He went back to the house and started investigating the Harrison's family history. He discovered that the diamond had actually been stolen before, but never found. He also discovered that many members of the Harrison family had financial difficulties recently. Then, one day, Detective Jones received an anonymous tip. The diamond was being held at a local pawn shop. He rushed to the shop and, lo and behold, there it was. But the thief was nowhere to be found. It wasn't until later that evening, when Detective Jones was going over the CCTV footage from the shop, that he saw a familiar face. It was the maid from the Harrison estate. She had stolen the diamond and pawned it off to cover her debts. The maid was arrested and the diamond was returned to the Harrisons. Justice had been served and Detective Jones had solved the case of the missing diamond. From that day on, the Harrisons made sure to have better security measures in place. And Detective Jones knew that he had not only solved the case, but made sure it didn't happen again. The Elusive Enigma once upon a time, in the bustling city of Elmwood, there existed an extraordinary detective named Detective Jameson. Renowned for his sharp wit and unparalleled problem-solving skills, he was often sought after by those seeking answers and justice. One day, a peculiar case landed on his desk, presenting itself as a long and perplexing mystery. 
The case involved a series of unexplained disappearances that had plagued the city for months. People from all walks of life had gone missing without a trace, leaving behind worried families and a community gripped with fear. The local police force was at a loss, and the mayor, desperate for a resolution, turned to Detective Jameson for help. Delving into the investigation, Detective Jameson discovered a striking resemblance between all the victims, they were all associated with the renowned Elmwood Art Gallery. From artists to patrons, everyone associated with the gallery seemed to vanish mysteriously. This realization led him down a winding path, filled with hidden clues, secret passageways, and unexpected twists. While meticulously scouring the gallery, Detective Jameson met an intriguing artist named Amelia. Her enigmatic personality and deep understanding of the gallery's history piqued his curiosity. Recognizing her as a potential key to unraveling the case, he approached her with caution, hoping to gain valuable insights. Amelia, initially reluctant to share her knowledge, slowly warmed up to Detective Jameson's gentle and patient demeanor. As they forged a connection, she confided in him about an ancient legend surrounding the gallery, passed down through generations of artists. According to the tale, anyone who possessed a pure creative spirit could unlock the gallery's hidden chamber, gaining access to unimaginable treasures. Sensing a possible connection to the disappearances, Detective Jameson delved deeper into the legend, unraveling its secrets one by one. Through his relentless pursuit of truth, he discovered that a clandestine society called the Shadow Acolytes had infiltrated the art gallery. The society sought to exploit the artistic talent of individuals for their own gain, using the hidden chamber as a source of power. With the truth finally revealed, Detective Jameson devised a plan to expose the Shadow Acolytes and save the victims. Working alongside Amelia, they set up a trap within the gallery during one of its grand exhibitions, luring the society's leaders into revealing themselves. Through their combined skills, they successfully apprehended the culprits, freeing the captured artists from their clutches. The city of Elmwood rejoiced as news of the rescue spread, and Detective Jameson emerged as a local hero. His brilliant mind and unwavering dedication had saved countless lives and unveiled a hidden evil lurking within the art world. As for Amelia, her talents blossomed under the newfound freedom, and her artwork flourished as she embraced her true potential. The elusive enigma was a case that would forever be etched in Detective Jameson's memory. It showcased not only his exceptional detective skills, but also his ability to build friendships and trust. At the heart of it all, it was a testament to the power of perseverance, creativity, and the strength of the human spirit in the face of darkness. The Enigmatic Case of Midnight Dreams Once upon a moonlit night in the town of Riverton, a place known for its serene atmosphere and picturesque landscapes, a puzzling mystery began to unravel. Detective Olivia Richards Renowned for her relentless pursuit of truth and unyielding determination, found herself captivated by the enigmatic case that awaited her. It all started when a peculiar dream began haunting the residents of Riverton. People claimed to have experienced vivid nightmares that mirrored their deepest fears, leaving them bewildered and anxious. Unable to find solace or rest, the townsfolk turned to Detective Richards for help. With her keen intuition and sharp intellect, Detective Richards embarked on a quest to uncover the secrets behind these midnight dreams. She delved into the lives of the affected residents, meticulously gathering clues and piecing together fragments of their troubled imaginations. As she investigated further, a pattern emerged. Each dream seemed to center around an old abandoned mansion at the edge of town. Its crumbling facade and eerie reputation only fueled the curiosity of the detective pushing her closer to the truth. One stormy evening, Detective Richards decided to explore the mansion herself. Armed with only a flashlight and her unwavering resolve, she made her way through the creaking halls and dimly lit rooms. In the heart of the mansion, she stumbled upon a hidden chamber filled with dusty old books and cryptic symbols decorating the walls. Amongst the chaos, she found a diary dating back several decades. The faded ink revealed tales of betrayal, secrets, and forbidden desires. 
It spoke of a curse that haunted the mansion, casting a shadow of darkness over the dreams of those connected to it. Driven by her insatiable thirst for answers, Detective Richards continued her investigation, determined to break the curse and bring tranquility back to the town of Riverton. With each step, she unraveled the intertwined stories of the mansion's former inhabitants and deciphered the cryptic symbols that held the key to their nightmares. As the story unfolded, Detective Richards discovered a long-forgotten tragedy that had befallen the mansion. It became clear that the curse was born out of sorrow and despair, seeking retribution for the wrongs committed within its walls. Through her relentless pursuit of truth, Detective Richards assembled the remaining descendants of those involved in the tragedy. Together, they faced their deepest fears head-on, embracing their past and finding redemption. As the curse was finally broken, the town of Riverton was once again filled with peaceful dreams and a renewed sense of hope. The case of the midnight dreams had been solved, but Detective Olivia Richards knew there were countless mysteries yet to unravel. With a gentle smile and a glimmer of anticipation in her eyes, she prepared herself for the next adventure that awaited her, ready to bring light to even the darkest night. The Puzzling Case of the Vanishing Heiress Detective Michael Hartley strolled down the dimly lit streets of Willowbrook City, his mind occupied with the details of a new case that had landed on his desk earlier that day. It was a long detective story. One that promised to challenge his expertise and unravel the secrets hidden within. The story began at the sprawling estate of the illustrious Belmont family. Charlotte Belmont, the heiress to the family fortune, had vanished without a trace. Her disappearance had sent shockwaves through the city, leaving her family in a state of despair and the entire community on edge. Detective Hartley arrived at the Belmont estate, greeted by a symphony of whispers and hushed conversations. The mansion stood tall and imposing. Its intricately designed facade now shrouded in an air of mystery. As he made his way inside, Detective Hartley encountered a myriad of potential suspects, each with their own motivations and secrets to conceal. The first person of interest was William Belmont, Charlotte's estranged husband. Their marriage had been on shaky ground for a while, filled with bitter arguments and heated disputes over the family fortune. Detective Hartley observed that William was acting peculiarly calm, almost as if he knew more than he let on. The second suspect was Amelia Danvers, Charlotte's childhood friend. Known for her cunning intellect, Amelia had always harbored an unspoken envy towards Charlotte's luxurious lifestyle. Detective Hartley noticed that Amelia seemed both anxious and evasive during their questioning, occasionally stumbling upon her own words. Further investigation led Detective Hartley to Thomas Harding, the family lawyer. His close proximity to the Belmont's financial affairs raised suspicions about his involvement in Charlotte's vanishing act. Yet, despite his polished demeanor and seemingly airtight alibi, there was something in his eyes that didn't quite add up. Days turned into weeks, and Detective Hartley meticulously pieced together the puzzle surrounding Charlotte's disappearance. He followed countless leads, chased shadows, and questioned potential witnesses. But each step forward seemed to unravel a whole new layer of this complex case. In his pursuit of the truth, Detective Hartley discovered a hidden secret room within the Belmont estate. The room concealed decades' worth of family records, revealing a web of deceit and betrayal that stretched far beyond Charlotte's disappearance. As he delved deeper into the family's past, it became evident that the truth lay buried in these ancestral secrets. Finally, a breakthrough emerged when an anonymous tip led Detective Hartley to a secluded cabin in the outskirts of Willowbrook City. There, he found Charlotte, chained and malnourished, her eyes filled with a mixture of relief and fear. It was a shocking revelation that highlighted the depth of darkness lurking within the hearts of those closest to Charlotte. With the help of evidence gathered during his arduous investigation, Detective Hartley unraveled the twisted plot against Charlotte. Motives intertwined. Long-held grudges were unveiled, and the true culprits were brought to light. The case concluded with a dramatic courtroom scene, where justice was served and Charlotte's tormentors faced the consequences of their actions.
Detective Michael Hartley emerged from the shadows of this long detective story, victorious, but bearing the weight of all he had uncovered. As he walked away, he couldn't help but wonder how such darkness could reside beneath the polished surface of the upper crust and how many more secrets lay waiting to be unveiled in the future. The Enigma of the Sapphire Rose Once upon a time, in the bustling city of Eldoria, a renowned detective named Adrian Holmes found himself embroiled in a perplexing case that would challenge his wit and cunning like never before. Known for his astute observations and attention to detail, Holmes was called upon by the city's elite to investigate the mysterious disappearance of the priceless sapphire rose. The sapphire rose was a rare gemstone, delicately carved to resemble a blooming rose. Its vibrant blue hue had captivated and mesmerized countless individuals over the years. The jewel belonged to Lady Arabella Winchester, a wealthy socialite known for her extravagant parties and love for all things beautiful. Yet, on the night of her annual ball, the breathtaking centerpiece vanished without a trace. As Holmes delved into the investigation, he found himself wading through a web of lies, deceit, and hidden motives. His first lead emerged from backstage, where the renowned illusionist, Sebastian von Mystique, had been performing that fateful evening. Suspicions heightened when it was discovered that von Mystique had made off with the valuable gemstone shortly after his final act. Determined to uncover the truth, Holmes tracked down the enigmatic illusionist to his hidden lair on the outskirts of the city. The detective entered the dimly lit room, adorned with antique props and mysterious artifacts. There, he found Von Mystique, disguised as a humble tailor, carefully examining the sapphire rose. Holmes cautiously approached the illusionist, keenly observing his every move. They engaged in a tense conversation, during which Holmes unearthed the true motivation behind Von Mystique's act of thievery. The illusionist had been blackmailed into stealing the sapphire rose by an anonymous figure, who threatened to expose his darkest secret if he didn't comply. With newfound empathy, Holmes realized that Von Mystique was not the true mastermind behind the theft. Together, they devised a plan to catch the anonymous culprit. They would stage a grand illusion during Lady Arabella's next gala, using the sapphire rose as bait. Holmes knew that the mastermind would not be able to resist witnessing their final act. As the night of the gala arrived, the crowd gathered with bated breath, unaware of the intricate plan unfolding before their eyes. Holmes and Von Mystique took center stage, captivating the audience with their deception. The detective skillfully wove a narrative, revealing his deductions one by one, until the true identity of the blackmailer was unveiled. In a dramatic turn of events, it was none other than Lady Arabella herself who had orchestrated the entire scheme. Driven by jealousy and the desire to possess the sapphire rose for her own, she had concocted an elaborate plan that ensnared the unsuspecting illusionist. Lady Arabella had carefully framed Von Mystique, exploiting his vulnerabilities to achieve her selfish goals. Holmes exposed Lady Arabella's deceit, leaving her in shock and disbelief. As justice was served, the sapphire rose was returned to its rightful owner and Eldoria celebrated the triumph of truth and righteousness. The case of the Sapphire Rose had tested Holmes' detective skills, pushing him to unravel the intricate layers of deception. Through his relentless pursuit of justice and unwavering determination, he had not only solved the enigma surrounding the missing gem, but also restored the trust and harmony in Eldoria once more. The Mysterious Disappearance of the Sapphire Heiress in the quaint town of Riverton, renowned for its picturesque landscapes and charming atmosphere, a dark cloud of mystery and intrigue hung in the air. The renowned sapphire heiress, Penelope Summersby, had vanished without a trace from her opulent mansion. The townsfolk were left bewildered, desperate for answers, and so they turned to the one man they knew could solve this enigma, Detective Oliver Westfield. With his sharp mind and keen eye for detail, Detective Westfield arrived at the Grand Summersby estate. He surveyed the lavish surroundings, ornate furnishings, and priceless works of art, each telling a story of wealth and luxury. It was within these walls that the heiress had last been seen, hosting an extravagant soiree the night before her disappearance. 
As the detective delved deeper into the case, he discovered a web of secrets and deceit lurking beneath the surface. Every maid, butler, and guest became a potential suspect, each with their own motives to covet Penelope's fortune. The gossipy whispers among the servants hinted at long-held grudges, hidden affairs, and bitter rivalries, which added layers of complexity to the investigation. The detective meticulously examined Penelope's personal effects, finding a series of cryptic letters written by an anonymous sender. These letters suggested a clandestine relationship that Penelope had kept hidden from the world. As he followed this lead, a startling revelation emerged. Penelope had been leading a double life, entangled in an illicit affair with a mysterious stranger. As Detective Westfield dug deeper into the secret life of the Sapphire heiress, he uncovered a network of connections leading to an underground world of criminal activity. Seedy back alley bars, dark alleys, and dangerous figures appeared on his radar, each one potentially involved in Penelope's disappearance. The detective's own life was put at risk as he pursued the truth, but his determination never wavered. Days turned into weeks, and still, no sign of Penelope emerged. However, Detective Westfield refused to give up. Following a lead, he found himself at the doorstep of an old abandoned warehouse on the outskirts of town. Inside, he discovered a hidden room, filled with stolen jewelry and treasures, each piece more valuable than the last. Among them, sparkling brighter than all, was the legendary Summersby Sapphire. The detective pieced together the puzzle. Penelope had been framed by her lover, another wealthy heir, who sought to take her fortune and eliminate her from his life. However, in his haste to dispose of the evidence, he had made a crucial error, leaving the sapphire behind. With the evidence in hand, Detective Westfield orchestrated an elaborate trap to catch the mastermind behind the plot. In a thrilling showdown, with tension thick in the air, justice prevailed, and the truth was revealed. The townsfolk rejoiced as Detective Oliver Westfield emerged triumphant, presenting the evidence that would restore Penelope Summersby's name and bring her back to Riverton. The heiress returned to the adoring embrace of her grateful neighbors forever indebted to the unwavering determination of their beloved detective. And so, the tale of the mysterious disappearance of the Sapphire heiress became the enduring legend of Riverton, a testament to the power of perseverance and the triumph of truth over deceit. The Missing Ring It was a humid summer evening in the small town of Millville. Detective Sarah Johnson had just started her shift at the police station when a frantic woman burst through the doors. Please, you have to help me. My wedding ring is missing, the woman cried. Detective Johnson took down the woman's information and began investigating the disappearance of the ring. She questioned the woman's husband, friends, and even combed through their house for any clues. Days turned into weeks and still, there was no sign of the missing ring. Detective Johnson refused to give up hope. One day, as she was driving through town, she noticed something peculiar in the window of a pawn shop. It was the missing ring. Detective Johnson rushed into the store and demanded to know where they got the ring. The pawnbroker reluctantly admitted that a man had sold it to him just days ago. With this new lead, Detective Johnson dug deeper and discovered that the man who sold the ring was actually the woman's ex-boyfriend who had recently been released from prison. Through careful investigation and a lot of legwork, Detective Johnson was able to connect the man to the theft of the ring and ultimately bring him to justice. The case may have taken longer than expected. But Detective Johnson never gave up and was able to solve the mystery of the missing ring. The case of the missing heirloom. Detective James was a renowned investigator with an impeccable track record. He had solved some of the toughest cases that the city had to offer. But this time, his skills were put to the test when a wealthy family hired him to find their missing heirloom. The heirloom was a priceless antique bracelet passed down for generations in the family. It had been stolen from the family's mansion during a dinner party they had hosted. Detective James arrived at the mansion and began his investigation. He interviewed all the guests and staff who had attended the dinner party. However, he could not find any leads. 
Days passed, and he was still struggling to find any clues. One day, while driving through the city, he noticed a suspicious-looking man wearing a similar bracelet to the one that had been stolen. He immediately followed the man and trailed him to a seedy part of town. As he approached the man, he noticed that he was wearing the same bracelet. But it was slightly different from the one that had been stolen. Upon further investigation, he discovered that the man was a fake antique dealer who had created a replica of the valuable heirloom. Detective James immediately arrested the man and recovered the stolen bracelet. He delivered the bracelet back to the family, who were thrilled and rewarded him handsomely for his work. This case proved to be one of the most challenging cases in Detective James's career, but he was glad that he had been able to help the family recover their priceless heirloom. The Enigma of the Midnight Manuscript Once upon a time in the small town of Willowbrook, Detective James Anderson found himself embroiled in a mysterious case that would challenge his intellect and test his resolve. It all began on a moonlit night when he received an anonymous tip about a clandestine gathering taking place at the abandoned mansion on Elm Street. Intrigued by the possibility of unveiling a long-kept secret, Detective Anderson ventured into the darkened estate. As he entered the grand foyer, he noticed a flickering light emanating from the library. With caution in his steps, he approached the room to find a group of individuals engaged in hushed conversations, their faces masked by shadows. Detective Anderson silently concealed himself behind a bookshelf, eavesdropping on the conversation. The topic of discussion revolved around the existence of a priceless, long-lost manuscript known as the Midnight Chronicles. Fabled to possess unparalleled power and knowledge, the manuscript had been missing for centuries, presumed destroyed. And now, the revelation suggested that it was not only intact, but in the possession of a member among the gathered group. As Detective Anderson pieced together the clues, he soon realized that the individuals in the room were part of a secret society dedicated to preserving ancient artifacts and maintaining balance within the world. Intrigued yet wary of their motives, he resolved to join their ranks. Aiming to gain their trust and ultimately unravel the truth behind the Midnight Chronicles. With each passing day, Detective Anderson immersed himself in the society's rituals and traditions, all the while keeping a watchful eye on every member. He became acquainted with their individual stories, their struggles, and their dedication to protecting the unknown. Months passed, and a breakthrough finally came when a member, Amelia, confided in Detective Anderson about her suspicions regarding a peer named Marcus. She believed Marcus possessed the Midnight Chronicles and intended to use its power for personal gain, jeopardizing the society's principles. Drawing upon his well-honed detective skills, Detective Anderson devised a plan to confront Marcus and expose his true intentions. Under the guise of a secret meeting, the detective introduced a forged manuscript to gauge Marcus's reaction, hoping to reveal his guilt or innocence. As Marcus studied the counterfeit manuscript, Detective Anderson watched closely for any telltale signs. Sweat dripped from Marcus's brow, and his hands trembled slightly as he tried to mask his emotions. It became apparent that Marcus was indeed the culprit they sought. With evidence in hand, Detective Anderson gathered the entire society for an emergency assembly. In a dramatic display of deduction and deduction, he confronted Marcus with undeniable proof of his treachery. Disgraced and cornered, Marcus had no choice but to admit his guilt. The Midnight Chronicles were recovered and peace was restored within the secret society. Detective Anderson's perseverance and unwavering commitment to justice had prevailed once again. As the days turned into years, the tale of the Midnight Manuscript became a legend passed down through generations. Detective James Anderson, ever the humble hero, continued to solve mysteries, leaving an indelible mark on the town of Willowbrook and in the hearts of its people. And so, the enigma of the Midnight Manuscript was forever etched in the annals of the detective's extraordinary career, reminding all who heard the story about the eternal struggle between light and darkness, truth and deception, and the immense power of knowledge. The Enigmatic Portrait
Once upon a time in the quaint little town of Elmwood, Detective Sophia Carter found herself entangled in a perplexing case. It all began when an unknown woman appeared at her doorstep, holding an exquisite portrait in her trembling hands. The woman, who introduced herself as Margaret Hamilton, pleaded with Detective Carter to solve the mystery behind the mesmerizing painting. It was said to be a family heirloom, passed down for generations. But it held a secret that had plagued Margaret's ancestors for centuries. Intrigued by the enigmatic portrait, Detective Carter agreed to take on the case. She examined the painting and noticed peculiar details, hidden symbols, mysterious patterns, and even what seemed to be faint writing concealed within the artwork. Determined to unravel its secrets, she embarked on a journey through Elmwood's history. Her investigation led her to the town's archives, where she discovered an old legend buried within the dusty records. Generations ago, a renowned painter by the name of Samuel Fairfax had resided in Elmwood. His works were celebrated for their ethereal quality, but one painting, in particular, had struck fear into the hearts of those who gazed upon it. The infamous painting, known as The Passage to Oblivion, was rumored to possess supernatural powers. It was believed that anyone who encountered the painting would fall victim to a series of unfortunate events. Detective Carter's heart raced as she realized the connection between the passage to oblivion and the portrait in Margaret's possession. With renewed determination, she ventured deeper into the town's history, uncovering dark secrets and long-forgotten mysteries. As she delved further into the case, Detective Carter discovered that each generation of Margaret's family had experienced inexplicable misfortunes, financial ruin, tragic accidents, and even unexplained disappearances. The portrait seemed to hold the key to these misfortunes. But understanding its significance proved to be a daunting challenge. Days turned into weeks, and Detective Carter tirelessly pursued leads, determined to break the curse that plagued Margaret's family. Her intuition led her to an abandoned mansion on the outskirts of town, once owned by Samuel Fairfax himself. Inside the dilapidated mansion, she stumbled upon a hidden room, where she discovered Samuel Fairfax's personal journal. As she leafed through its pages, a chilling revelation emerged the artist had made a pact with a malevolent force, promising his soul in exchange for fame and acclaim. The truth behind the passage to oblivion was finally revealed. With newfound knowledge, Detective Carter devised a plan to neutralize the portrait's power once and for all. She invited the town's residents to a gathering at the mansion, unveiling the portrait within a protective circle. Together, they chanted ancient incantations and performed a ritual passed down through generations. As the ritual concluded, the portrait vanished, returning to the depths from which it came. Finally, peace was restored to Elmwood. Margaret and her family were free from the curse that had haunted them for ages thanks to Detective Sophia Carter's relentless pursuit of the truth. As gratitude overflowed within the town, Detective Carter humbly accepted their praises. Content in knowing she had brought justice and closure to those affected. And so, the tale of the enigmatic portrait came to an end, leaving behind a town forever grateful for a detective whose unwavering determination had illuminated the darkest corners of their past. The Enigma of the Whispering Shadows once upon a time, in the bustling city of Ardenton, there lived a renowned detective named Inspector James Carter. He was known for his sharp wit and unwavering determination to solve even the most perplexing cases. One day, as he sat behind his mahogany desk, smoking his pipe, a peculiar case came knocking at his door. Intrigued, Inspector Carter listened attentively as a young woman named Amelia recounted her harrowing experience. Amelia claimed to have been haunted by strange shadows that whispered menacingly in the dead of night. She was convinced that these shadows held the key to a dark secret that had haunted her family for generations. Determined to help Amelia, Inspector Carter delved into the mystery headfirst. His investigation led him to a dilapidated mansion on the outskirts of town, purportedly haunted by the restless spirits of those who had met tragic ends. Armed with his trusty notebook, magnifying glass, and an indomitable spirit, 
The inspector started his exploration within the musty halls of the mansion. As he searched for clues, the inspector stumbled upon a hidden chamber, concealed behind a bookshelf. Inside, he found a dusty journal, belonging to Amelia's long-lost ancestor, Abigail Whitaker. The journal revealed a secret society operating in the shadows, known as the Whispers of Nightfall. Their goal was to harness supernatural powers and use them for their nefarious agenda. It appeared that Amelia's family had inadvertently become entangled in this dangerous web of intrigue. With each page that Inspector Carter turned, the whispered shadows seemed to grow louder and more persistent. Unbeknownst to him, the members of the Whispers of Nightfall were watching his every move, determined to keep their darkest secrets buried. As the inspector continued his relentless pursuit of the truth, he realized that unraveling this enigma would require more than just his keen senses. He enlisted the help of a brilliant young scientist named Dr. Eleanor Gray, who possessed a deep understanding of the supernatural forces at play. Together, Inspector Carter and Dr. Gray uncovered a complex network of clues scattered throughout the city leading them closer to the elusive mastermind behind the whispers of nightfall. They encountered numerous obstacles along the way, from booby-trapped hideouts to ominous encounters with shadowy figures. Despite the dangers that lay ahead, Inspector Carter remained unyielding, encouraging Amelia and Dr. Gray to persevere. In their quest for justice, they discovered that Amelia's family had inadvertently discovered a powerful artifact coveted by the whispers of nightfall. This artifact could grant unimaginable power to its possessor and unleash chaos upon Ardenton. In a climactic showdown, Inspector Carter and his allies confronted the leader of the secretive society, revealing the true nature of their nefarious plans. With quick thinking and lightning-fast reflexes, they managed to thwart their adversaries and put an end to the whispers of nightfall once and for all. As the dust settled, peace was restored to Ardenton. Inspector Carter's unwavering determination and relentless pursuit of the truth had prevailed, unveiling the secrets concealed within the whispering shadows. And so, the city held Inspector James Carter as a hero, forever remembered as the detective who unraveled the enigma of the whispering shadows. The Case of the Stolen Diamond Detective Smith had been working on a case for months. It was a classic case of theft, but this time it was a diamond worth millions of dollars that had been taken. The owner of the diamond was a wealthy business tycoon, and he had hired Detective Smith to get his diamond back, no matter what. The detective had worked tirelessly to gather clues, interview witnesses, and track down leads. There were several suspects, including the owner's own family members, employees, and even some known criminals in the area. The detective knew he was getting close to the truth when he received a phone call from an anonymous tipster. The caller told him about a hidden location where the stolen diamond could be found. Detective Smith quickly gathered his team, and they set out to find the diamond. They arrived at an abandoned warehouse on the outskirts of town and found the diamond hidden inside a secret compartment. However, they were too late. The diamond had already been stolen again and the thief had left a message behind. The message read, You may have found the diamond, but you will never catch me. The detective was determined not to give up. He searched for more clues and re-interviewed the suspects. Finally, he discovered that the thief was none other than the tycoon's own daughter. She had taken the diamond to get back at her father for neglecting her throughout her life. With the evidence in hand, Detective Smith confronted the thief and convinced her to return the diamond. In the end, justice was served, and the diamond was returned to its rightful owner. Detective Smith had solved another case, and he knew that he was one step closer to becoming the best detective in the city. The Mysterious Enigma of Moonlight Manor Once upon a time, nestled amidst the rolling hills and sweeping meadows, stood an ancient manor called Moonlight Manor. Known for its eerie aura and countless tales of inexplicable events, it had become a subject of fascination and speculation among locals for generations. Over time, rumors spread of strange occurrences, unexplained disappearances, and whispers of ghosts that haunted the premises. 
Detective Emma Lawson, renowned for her keen intuition and unwavering determination, found herself drawn to Moonlight Manor one stormy evening in search of a new challenge. Armed with only her trusty notepad and flashlight, she ventured into the darkened halls, ready to unravel the mysteries that shrouded the manor's past. Upon entering the grand foyer, Emma felt a rush of cold air that sent shivers down her spine. Ignoring the uneasiness, she pushed forward, guided by the dim light peering through the dusty windows. As she made her way through the creaking hallways, searching for clues, she discovered a hidden chamber, tucked behind a decrepit bookshelf. Inside the chamber, she found a collection of old journals and diaries belonging to the previous owners of Moonlight Manor. These accounts revealed a haunting tale that gripped Emma's soul. It told of a tragic love story between two forbidden lovers, Isabella and William, who were torn apart by circumstance and societal expectations. Determined to solve the enigma, Emma delved deeper into their troubled history. As she meticulously pieced together the fragments of their lives, she uncovered a pattern of suspicious deaths and vanishings that had plagued Moonlight Manor for centuries. The incident seemed to align with the untimely deaths of those who attempted to separate Isabella and William. With every step closer to the truth, Emma encountered peculiar phenomena. Shadows danced along the walls, whispers echoed through the air, and an underlying sense of foreboding intensified. A mysterious presence seemed to observe her every move, as if attempting to deter her from unraveling the manor's secrets. As the investigation progressed, Emma made a startling discovery. The ghost of Isabella still roamed the halls, unable to find peace until the truth behind Moonlight Manor was revealed. The spectral apparition guided Emma towards hidden passages and secret rooms, whispering cryptic clues along the way. Finally, after months of relentless pursuit, Emma uncovered the heart-wrenching truth. Isabella had been unjustly accused of foul play in the mysterious deaths that plagued the manor. It was William who committed these heinous acts, driven by jealousy and a desperate desire to keep Isabella forever trapped within Moonlight Manor's dark embrace. In the ultimate confrontation, Emma confronted the spirit of William. Using her compassion and empathy, she persuaded him to relinquish his grip on the manor and accept the consequences of his actions. As the moonlight bathed Moonlight Manor, the spirits of Isabella and William finally found peace. Their tormented souls released from their earthly prison. For her bravery and resolve, Detective Emma Lawson would always be remembered as the one who solved the mysterious enigma of Moonlight Manor. The once eerie abode transformed into a symbol of hope and redemption. A testament to the power of uncovering the truth. And so, as years passed, Moonlight Manor became a beacon of inspiration for those who sought answers beyond the veil of darkness reminding them that even the most impenetrable mysteries could be unraveled with patient persistence and a touch of humanity. The Case of the Missing Heirloom Detective Jane had been working on the case of the missing heirloom for months now. The precious diamond that had been passed down through generations in the wealthy family was gone without a trace. She had interviewed all the family members, searched every inch of the mansion, and even looked into the backgrounds of the staff but had come up with nothing. It was as if the diamond had vanished into thin air. Frustrated and determined, Detective Jane decided to take a different approach. She went undercover as a new housekeeper, taking up residence in the mansion to try and catch the thief who had stolen the heirloom. Days turned into weeks, and Jane started to blend in with the others. She cleaned diligently, cooked meals, and even bonded with some of the staff but she never let her guard down. She continued to keep a watchful eye on everyone, trying to find any clues that could lead her to the thief. One day, while cleaning the master bedroom, Jane noticed something odd about the painting above the fireplace. She took a closer look and discovered a hidden safe behind it. Without hesitation, she opened it and found not only the diamond but also a note from the thief confessing to the crime. With evidence in hand, Jane called a meeting with the family and staff and revealed the thief's identity. It was one of the family's own relatives who had been struggling financially and saw the diamond as an opportunity to solve their problems. Justice was served, and the heirloom was returned to its rightful place in the family's collection. 
Detective Jane was commended for her outstanding work. And as she left the mansion for the final time, she couldn't help but smile. Another case solved and justice served, all thanks to her hard work and determination. Shadows of Betrayal Once upon a time in the bustling city of Grayton, Detective Emily Blackwood worked diligently to solve some of the most perplexing cases. With her sharp intellect and keen observation skills, she had earned a reputation for unraveling mysteries that seemed impenetrable to others. However, no challenge had ever tested her mettle as much as the enigmatic case that would come to be known as Shadows of Betrayal. It all began on a gloomy night when a prominent businessman, Charles Harrington, was found dead in his opulent mansion. The circumstances surrounding the death were shrouded in mystery, with no obvious signs of foul play but whispers of a hidden secret. Determined to uncover the truth, Detective Blackwood tirelessly examined every inch of the crime scene, searching for the smallest clues. As the investigation progressed, it became evident that the victim had led a life full of secrets and lies. Charles Harrington had built an empire through shady means, earning him many enemies. His professional rival, Jonathan Sinclair, was an obvious suspect. However, Detective Blackwood sensed there was more to the story, willing to look beyond the surface. Days turned into weeks, and the detective meticulously delved into Charles Harrington's past. She interviewed his closest associates, including his business partners, employees, and even his own family members. Each conversation revealed a new layer painting a complex portrait of a man tormented by his own actions. Intriguingly, during her investigation, Detective Blackwood stumbled upon an unlikely confidant, Harrington's personal secretary, Amelia Johnson. Though timid and soft-spoken, Amelia possessed a quiet determination that caught the detective's attention. Sensing her loyalty, Detective Blackwood confided in Amelia, sharing her suspicions about the double lives lived by Charles Harrington. Together, the detective and her newfound ally embarked on an intricate journey into the shadows of betrayal. They uncovered a clandestine network of illicit dealings, leading them down a path of corruption, blackmail, and revenge. Each step brought them closer to the truth. Yet danger lurked in every corner. The city's underworld, realizing that Detective Blackwood was closing in on their operations, attempted to intimidate and silence her. But she remained unfazed, driven by her unwavering commitment to justice. Amelia, too, displayed unwavering bravery. Standing by her side as both a source of support and a beacon of hope. Finally, after months of relentless pursuit, Detective Emily Blackwood pieced together the puzzle. In a climactic confrontation, she exposed the true mastermind behind Charles Harrington's murder, his wife. Victoria Harrington Consumed by jealousy and greed, Victoria had orchestrated her husband's demise, hoping to inherit his fortune while concealing her own dark secrets. With her immense strength and unwavering determination, Detective Blackwood brought justice to Charles Harrington and closure to those affected by his web of deceit. Thanks to her dedication to the truth, the city of Grayton could begin to heal. And so, the story of shadows of betrayal came to an end. A testament to the perseverance of one brave detective who fearlessly pursued justice, refusing to let shadows of betrayal dim the light of truth. The Enigmatic Case of the Midnight Cipher Once upon a time in the bustling city of Eldoria, renowned detective, Inspector Amelia Hartley, found herself embroiled in an enigmatic case that would challenge her investigative skills to their limits. Late one stormy night, a cryptic message arrived at the precinct, demanding her attention. The message was simple yet puzzling, it contained a series of numbers. Seemingly random and unrelated. Determined to decipher its meaning, Inspector Hartley meticulously analyzed the sequence, hoping it held the key to unlocking the mystery that lay before her. As Hartley delved deeper into the investigation, she discovered a connection between the numbers and a series of high-profile art thefts that had plagued the city in recent weeks. The stolen pieces were all priceless masterpieces from different eras, leading her to believe that a cunning mastermind was behind the scenes, orchestrating these seemingly unrelated crimes. 
Armed with her wit, Hartley began her pursuit, traversing the city's dimly lit alleys, interviewing suspects, and examining each crime scene with a keen eye. Along the way, she encountered an eclectic cast of characters, a charming art historian with a hidden past, an elusive art collector with a penchant for secrecy, and a reclusive genius locked up in his mansion, seemingly uninterested in the outside world. As the investigation progressed, a pattern emerged. Each art theft was carried out during the midnight hour, leaving no trace or witnesses. Inspector Hartley suspected that the thief was a master of disguise, blending seamlessly into the shadows. Determined to catch the culprit, she knew she had to find a weak link in the chain. Late one evening, after an exhausting day of investigation, Hartley received a tip from an anonymous source. The informer claimed to have witnessed a suspicious exchange of valuable artifacts in an abandoned warehouse on the outskirts of the city. Sensing an opportunity, Inspector Hartley hurried to the location, ready to unravel the truth once and for all. As she approached the warehouse, with rain pouring down, she noticed a flickering light and a faint sound of footsteps inside. Cautiously, she entered, her heart pounding with anticipation. Inside, she found a hidden room, dimly lit, filled with stolen art pieces from the recent thefts. Just as Hartley began documenting the evidence, a figure emerged from the darkness, the elusive art collector herself. A tense standoff ensued as the two faced each other, each aware of the stakes at hand. The art collector revealed herself to be the mastermind behind the thefts, driven by her insatiable greed for these priceless works of art. In a battle of wits and determination, Hartley outmaneuvered the art collector. Using her keen observational skills to deduce her motives and expose her carefully crafted plan. With the thief apprehended, justice was served. The city of Eldoria rejoiced in the knowledge that their beloved masterpieces were safely returned. Inspector Amelia Hartley was hailed as a hero. A relentless detective who navigated the treacherous path of deceit and cunning to bring the culprit to justice. Her unwavering commitment and relentless pursuit of the truth had once again prevailed, ensuring the city's safety and preserving its rich artistic heritage. As the rain ceased and the sun broke through the clouds, Eldoria basked in the glow of Inspector Hartley's triumph, forever grateful for her unwavering dedication to uncovering the truth. And so, the case of the enigmatic case of the Midnight Cipher became a testament to the power of perseverance, intellect, and the indomitable spirit of justice. Shadows of Deception Once upon a time, in the bustling city of Azureville, there lived a renowned detective named Ethan Rivers. With his sharp intellect and keen eye for detail, he had solved countless mysterious cases that had stumped even the most seasoned police officers. However, one particular case would prove to be his greatest challenge yet. It all began when Ethan received a frantic phone call from Amelia Sinclair, a wealthy socialite known for her glamorous parties. She explained that she had been receiving anonymous letters threatening to expose a dark secret from her past if she did not pay an exorbitant amount of money. Fearing for her reputation, Amelia implored Ethan to investigate and put a stop to this torment. Determined to help, Ethan met with Amelia in her lavish penthouse apartment. As they spoke, he noticed that her demeanor seemed off, as though she was hiding something. Sensing her unease, Ethan gently reassured her that he would uncover the truth, no matter how deep it lay hidden. With a stack of cryptic letters as his only lead, Ethan immersed himself in the investigation. He meticulously studied the handwriting, comparing it to known samples, but found no match. Undeterred, he delved deeper, meeting with Amelia's close friends and acquaintances. Hoping to find a connection to the elusive blackmailer. Days turned into weeks, and as Ethan tirelessly pursued the truth, he uncovered a web of lies and deceit that ensnared everyone in Amelia's inner circle. Each person he interviewed had their own secrets. Seemingly unrelated yet intertwined in some inexplicable way. The more he discovered, the more he realized that this case was far from ordinary. One by one, Ethan peeled back the layers of deception exposing clandestine affairs, hidden addictions, and long-buried family feuds. 
but amidst the chaos, he always stood as a beacon of hope and support for each person involved, extending his gentle guidance and understanding in their darkest moments. Finally, after countless sleepless nights and tireless pursuit, Ethan unearthed the true identity of the blackmailer. The villain turned out to be none other than Amelia's own personal assistant, Dorothy Johnson. She had taken advantage of Amelia's vulnerability and manipulated the situation to her advantage. In a dramatic confrontation, Ethan confronted Dorothy, unveiling a meticulously crafted plan devised to exploit Amelia's fear and desperation. Through a combination of intellect and empathy, Ethan convinced Dorothy to turn herself in and face the consequences of her actions. With the mystery solved, Amelia breathed a sigh of relief, grateful to have the darkness lifted from her life. In that moment of triumph, Ethan Rivers stood as a symbol of justice, compassion, and unwavering determination, proving that even in the shadows of deception, goodness and truth would prevail. And so, the story of Ethan Rivers, the legendary detective of Azureville, would forever be etched into the annals of the city's history, serving as a reminder that sometimes, the most challenging mysteries can only be solved with patience, understanding, and a gentle hand to guide the way. The Mystery of the Vanished Gems Detective James had been on the case for months. A string of jewelry store heists had been happening all across town, and the latest hit was his biggest yet. The infamous Crimson Diamond, worth millions, had been stolen from the museum. James had interviewed dozens of witnesses and suspects, searched high and low for any clues, but nothing seemed to pan out. It was as if the culprit knew exactly how to cover their tracks. Finally, a breakthrough came when a small-time crook named Benny was caught with a rare gemstone. It was traced back to one of the heists, and James knew he had to act fast. Benny refused to give up his accomplices, but James had a plan. He posed as a buyer for the stolen jewels, and soon enough, he was face to face with the mastermind behind the heists. It turned out that the thief was none other than the curator of the museum. He had been stealing the gems and selling them on the black market for years, and no one had ever suspected a thing. With the help of Benny, James was able to obtain the evidence needed to convict the curator. It was a long and exhausting case, but justice was served, and the stolen gems were finally returned to their rightful owners. Detective James knew that this wouldn't be his last case, but he also knew that with determination and a bit of luck, no criminal could escape his grasp. The Elusive Cipher Once upon a time in the bustling city of Arcadia, there lived a renowned detective named Thomas Davis. With his sharp intellect and keen eye for detail, he had successfully solved countless mysteries that had left others perplexed. However, a new case had just landed on his desk, one that would challenge him unlike any other. It all began on a foggy evening when a distressed lady named Victoria Gainsborough sought Thomas's assistance. Victoria was quite well known in high society circles due to her passion for collecting rare artifacts from across the globe. She explained to Thomas that her most prized possession, an ancient artifact known as the Elusive Cipher, had been stolen from her heavily guarded mansion. The Elusive Cipher was believed to hold an unsolvable code, which many had tried to crack over the years. Legend had it that whoever deciphered it would be granted unimaginable power. The mystery surrounding the artifact intrigued Thomas, and he immediately agreed to take the case. Thomas delved deep into the investigation, questioning the servants, examining the crime scene meticulously, and studying Victoria's extensive collection for any possible clues. Days turned into weeks, and yet, the identity of the thief eluded him. Frustration began to creep into Thomas's mind. But he couldn't give up. One day, while revisiting the crime scene, Thomas stumbled upon a tiny piece of parchment hidden underneath a Persian rug. It seemed insignificant, but he knew better than to overlook any possibility. After careful examination, he discovered a microscopic message etched onto the parchment, a clue left by the cunning thief. The message read, In the depths of the darkest night, where stars hide their guiding light, beneath the clock that counts our days, the truth shall shine through tangled haze. 
Thomas pondered these enigmatic lines, trying to decipher their hidden meaning. Hours turned into days as he retraced the steps described in the note. Finally, in the dead of night, he found himself standing beneath the towering town clock, its hands silently ticking away. With a surge of intuition, Thomas observed the moonlight casting intriguing shadows near the clock's base. As he approached, a small switch was revealed, concealed within the intricate carvings. With a flick, a secret passage opened before his eyes, leading him into a dimly lit chamber below. There, he found the thief, a master of disguise, named Edgar Blackwood, standing amidst a collection of stolen artifacts. Edgar had long been fascinated by the elusive cipher and had dedicated years to deciphering its code. Unable to solve it himself, he had chosen to steal it. Hoping that its secrets would gradually unravel in his possession. Thomas confronted Edgar, revealing how he had pieced together the clue and tracked him down. Edgar admitted defeat and marveled at Thomas's astute deduction skills. The two men engaged in a conversation about their shared passion for mysteries until the authorities arrived to apprehend the thief. News of Thomas's successful recovery of the elusive cipher spread throughout Arcadia, cementing his reputation as the city's most brilliant detective. However, he remained humble, always attributing his success to patience, steady observation, and a deep appreciation for the most cryptic of puzzles. And so, Thomas Davis continued to take on new cases, never ceasing his quest to unravel the secrets hidden within the labyrinth of human nature and the enigmatic workings of the world around him. The Enigmatic Affair at Oak Ridge Manor Detective Samuel Harris sat in his office, studying a peculiar case file that had caught his attention. It was an enigma, one that had eluded even the most seasoned detectives in the city. Determined to unravel the truth, he embarked on a long, winding journey that would test both his intellect and perseverance. The tale began at Oak Ridge Manor, a grand estate owned by the wealthy Kingston family. One stormy night, Sir Anthony Kingston, the patriarch of the family, was found lifeless in his study. The circumstances surrounding his death were shrouded in mystery, with no apparent signs of foul play. However, the absence of any natural cause raised suspicion, leading Samuel to delve deeper into the events that transpired that fateful evening. As he arrived at Oak Ridge Manor, Samuel was greeted by whispers and glances from the household staff, each seemingly burdened by their own secrets. The detective sensed that beneath their veneer of loyalty, they were concealing valuable information. Samuel meticulously examined the crime scene, analyzing every minute detail. He discovered a hidden passage behind a bookshelf, leading to a secret chamber intricately decorated with ancient artifacts. Therein lay a hidden safe, locked with an intricate mechanism far beyond ordinary comprehension. It seemed to hold the key to the truth. Samuel deduced that the murderer, aware of Sir Anthony's wealth, sought a particular artifact the late millionaire possessed a priceless emerald pendant known as the Eye of Osiris. Its value was not solely monetary, legends whispered that it held mystical powers. With the assistance of a brilliant locksmith, Samuel unlocked the safe, only to discover an empty velvet box. Someone had beaten him to the Eye of Osiris. Determined to solve the case, Samuel began questioning the manor's inhabitants individually each encounter yielding a new piece to the intricate puzzle. Lady Amelia Kingston, Sir Anthony's wife, had been estranged from her husband for years. Rumors of a secret lover and a pending divorce were whispered among the staff. Samuel found himself captivated by her delicate beauty and vulnerable demeanor, but his instincts warned him that appearances could be deceiving. Thomas Kingston, Sir Anthony's younger brother, harbored a deep resentment towards his sibling, stemming from an old family feud. Money and power tainted their relationship, making Thomas a prime suspect in Samuel's eyes. However, he lacked a solid motive, pushing the detective to explore other possibilities. Fiona Carter, the devoted family physician, had been treating Sir Anthony for a mysterious illness. Samuel scrutinized her every move, suspicious of her knowledge of the hidden safe and its contents. Fiona's serene countenance never wavered, making it difficult to ascertain her true intentions. 
Days turned into weeks as Samuel tirelessly pursued the truth. He interrogated every servant, combing through their alibis and cross-referencing their statements. But just as he felt he was closing in on the culprit, a shocking revelation blindsided him. The missing eye of Osiris resurfaced, delivered anonymously, to Samuel's office. Along with it, a note addressed to him. Claiming responsibility for Sir Anthony's murder. The author boasted of their intelligence, vowing to elude capture forever. Determined not to let the mastermind behind this intricate scheme escape justice, Samuel threw himself into the final stages of his investigation. The pieces of the puzzle clicked together, revealing a web of deceit, betrayal, and greed. In a dramatic confrontation, Samuel unveiled the true identity of the murderer none other than Lady Amelia Kingston herself. Motivated by financial desperation and revenge for years of neglect, she concocted an elaborate plan to frame Thomas and secure her freedom, all while acquiring the Eye of Osiris. As Lady Amelia's schemes unraveled, her facade of vulnerability crumbled. With irrefutable evidence against her, justice was finally served. The enigmatic affair at Oak Ridge Manor showcased Samuel's unwavering determination and his commitment to unraveling the truth. It cemented his position as one of the city's finest detectives, ensuring that his name would be remembered long after the echoes of this captivating case faded away. The Elusive Enigma Once upon a time, in the quaint little town of Willowbrook, there lived a brilliant detective named Oliver Thornfield. Known for his keen sense of observation and sharp intellect, Oliver had solved numerous puzzling cases, earning him the respect and admiration of the townsfolk. One gloomy morning, a distressed widow named Mrs. Evelyn Harrison arrived at Oliver's office. Her husband, Mr. Harrison, had gone missing under mysterious circumstances. Mrs. Harrison, overwhelmed with worry, pleaded with Oliver to solve the enigma surrounding her husband's disappearance. Oliver, always eager to help those in need, agreed to take on the case. He meticulously examined Mr. Harrison's personal belongings, hoping to unearth any clues that could lead him to the truth. As he combed through the assortment of items, something caught his attention, a cryptic note hidden within one of the pockets. The note contained a series of strange symbols, seemingly indecipherable at first glance. Unfazed by the challenge, Oliver deduced that it was a coded message. Determined to crack the puzzle, he spent hours poring over various codes and ciphers, trying to find the right pattern. Finally, a breakthrough occurred, the symbols corresponded to letters in the alphabet. With the key in hand, Oliver decoded the message. It revealed a location, an abandoned warehouse on the outskirts of town. Armed with his wit and a sense of anticipation, Oliver set out to explore the eerie premises. As he approached the dilapidated building, a full moon cast an eerie glow upon the surroundings. Cautiously stepping inside, the detective was met with a labyrinth of darkness. Oliver's heart raced as he followed a trail of footprints, leading him deeper into the maze-like structure. Suddenly, the silence was shattered by a distant sound, the muffled cry of a man. Without hesitation, Oliver sprinted towards the source of the commotion. In a dimly lit room, he discovered Mr. Harrison, bound and gagged, desperately struggling to free himself. With expert precision, Oliver untied Mr. Harrison. Relieved and grateful, Mr. Harrison could hardly speak. But his frantic gestures hinted at something more menacing lurking nearby. Following Mr. Harrison's gaze, Oliver noticed a concealed hatch on the floor. With trepidation, they descended into a hidden underground lair, a secret chamber filled with peculiar contraptions and ancient artifacts. Their discovery took a sinister turn when a masked figure emerged from the shadows. It was none other than Dr. Nigel Blackwood, Willowbrook's renowned archaeologist. Driven by greed and an insatiable thirst for power, Dr. Blackwood had orchestrated Mr. Harrison's kidnapping to obtain an ancient artifact, a mythical talisman said to bestow unparalleled strength upon its possessor. A scuffle ensued as Oliver bravely fought against Dr. Blackwood determined to protect both Mr. Harrison and society from the doctor's malevolent plans. Despite Dr. Blackwood's cunning and physical capabilities, 
Oliver's quick thinking and resourcefulness triumphed over evil. With the local authorities alerted by the commotion, Dr. Blackwood was swiftly apprehended. The town of Willowbrook rejoiced at the safe return of Mr. Harrison and hailed Oliver as a hero. The mystery that had plagued them had been solved, thanks to Oliver's unwavering determination and sharp detective skills. In the end, Oliver's relentless pursuit of truth and justice prevailed. Reminding everyone in Willowbrook that even in the darkest of times, there is always light if one has the patience, intellect, and courage to find it. Shadows of Deception Once upon a time, in the bustling city of Havenbrook, renowned detective Gabriel Lockwood found himself entangled in a web of mystery that seemed to have no end in sight. His reputation as a brilliant and relentless investigator had earned him this case. One that would test not only his skills, but also his resolve. It all began on a foggy evening, when wealthy businessman Alexander Montgomery was found dead in his opulent mansion, the Ivory Manor. The circumstances surrounding his death were shrouded in secrecy. With only whispers of foul play circulating among the city's elite. Gabriel was summoned to the scene, where he was greeted by Inspector Amelia Foster, an experienced but weary officer burdened by the weight of unsolved cases. As Gabriel stepped inside the grand mansion, the scent of intrigue hung heavy in the air, filling the vast halls with an unspoken tension. The investigation led Gabriel down a treacherous path, as he uncovered a myriad of hidden secrets within Alexander Montgomery's life. It became apparent that the deceased had been leading a dual existence, filled with dark dealings and clandestine activities. But what remained unclear to Gabriel was the motive behind his untimely demise. As Gabriel delved deeper into his investigations, he encountered a cast of peculiar characters, each holding their own secrets and motives. There was Eliza Thornfield, the enigmatic femme fatale, who seemed to have a connection to Montgomery's mysterious affairs. Then there was Frederick Whitman, a former business partner who had fallen from grace, consumed by bitterness and resentment. Time seemed to slip away as Gabriel navigated through a labyrinth of false leads and red herrings. He followed every trail meticulously, never wavering in his pursuit of the truth. His dedication to justice was unwavering, even as the city's shadows threatened to engulf him. Obstacles emerged at every turn, but Gabriel's intuition and astute observation skills guided him through the maze of deception. With each revelation, the intricate puzzle started to piece together revealing a sinister plot that extended far beyond Montgomery's murder. As the tide of mystery subsided, Gabriel found himself confronting an unimaginable truth. The web of deception was carefully crafted to hide a more significant scheme, one that threatened the very fabric of Havenbrook society. The betrayal ran deep, embedded within powerful circles that sought to protect their interests at any cost. With determination blazing in his eyes, Gabriel mustered every ounce of his strength to bring justice to the doorsteps of those responsible. The battle against the shadows would be fierce, but he refused to let darkness triumph over light. In this long detective story, Gabriel Lockwood demonstrated his unwavering commitment to serving truth and justice. Through the darkest alleys of Havenbrook, he carved a path paved with insight, persistence, and ultimately, redemption. And as the city's silent guardian, Gabriel became a symbol of hope. Reminding all that beneath the shadows, the light of justice would always prevail. Shadows of the Crescent Moon Once upon a time, in the bustling streets of Crescent City, a long and enigmatic tale of mystery unfolded. Detective Ethan Hart had a reputation for his keen wit and a heart of gold. His services were sought after by both the wealthy elite and the struggling lower class. With his piercing blue eyes and a sense of justice burning within him, he vowed to uncover the truth. No matter how deep it was buried. It all began on a moonlit night when a renowned archaeologist, Dr. Amelia Blackwood, mysteriously disappeared. Her latest expedition had led her to a hidden temple rumored to house an ancient artifact of immense power. As word spread about the missing doctor, whispers of her untimely demise began to circulate. Determined to unravel the secrets behind her disappearance, 
Detective Hart immersed himself in the case. The investigation began with questioning those closest to Dr. Blackwood. Her doting assistant, Sebastian, feared the worst. He confided in Detective Hart, revealing that she had been acting strangely in recent weeks, as if haunted by an unseen force. The detective noted the name Serpent's Eye scribbled in her diary, a cryptic clue to what she had encountered. Digging deeper, Hart uncovered a world of ancient legends and rival factions vying for control of the serpent's eye. The artifact was said to possess the power to grant immeasurable wealth and eternal life. As he delved further into the mysteries surrounding it, he found himself entangled in a web of deceit where nobody could be trusted. From the dark underworld of organized crime to the opulent mansions of the city's elite, Detective Hart followed a trail of clues that led him closer to the truth. He discovered that there was a secret society known as the Order of Shadows, pulling the strings from the shadows, manipulating events to serve their own sinister agenda. With time running out, Hart found himself face to face with the mastermind behind it all. A treacherous figure known as the Shadow King. It was in the heart of an abandoned cathedral, illuminated only by the pale light of the crescent moon, that an epic battle ensued. Armed with his unwavering resolve and sheer determination, Detective Hart fought tooth and nail against the Shadow King and his minions. The clash between good and evil reverberated through the night, as Hart's courage and skill pushed him to the brink of victory. In the end, justice prevailed, and the truth behind Dr. Amelia Blackwood's disappearance was finally uncovered. The serpent's eye was returned to its rightful place, safely locked away from those who sought to harness its power for personal gain. Detective Ethan Hart emerged victorious, hailed as a hero by the citizens of Crescent City. His bravery and dedication had brought peace to a city shrouded in darkness. As the moon slowly set over the horizon, Detective Hart vowed to continue his quest for justice protecting the innocent from the shadows that lurked nearby. And so, Crescent City remained a beacon of hope. A place where even the darkest secrets could be revealed and overcome. The Enigma of the Midnight Mansion Once upon a foggy autumn evening, Detective James Hastings found himself standing in front of the notorious Midnight Mansion. The dilapidated structure had long been associated with strange occurrences and unexplained disappearances. Determined to uncover the truth hidden within its walls, Detective Hastings took a deep breath and stepped into the darkness. As he cautiously explored the mansion, his footsteps echoing in the eerie silence, Detective Hastings couldn't shake off the feeling of being watched. The air was heavy with mystery, and every creak of the floorboards sent shivers down his spine. Unfazed by the foreboding atmosphere, he pressed on. The mansion revealed itself as a labyrinth of secret passages and concealed rooms. Detective Hastings' sharp intellect and keen observations led him to unravel the secrets that lay within its walls. He discovered clues meticulously scattered throughout the mansion, each hinting at a deeper web of deceit. From the faint echoes of haunting laughter to the ethereal whispers carried by the wind, the midnight mansion seemed alive with ghostly apparitions. Yet, Detective Hastings knew better than to let superstition cloud his judgment. As he diligently followed the trail of evidence, he encountered an eclectic cast of suspects, all hiding their own motives and secrets. Conversations with the mansion's caretaker unveiled a troubling history, filled with tales of unexplained disappearances. The neighboring townspeople spoke of cold stares from shadowy figures peering through the mansion's windows at dusk. But amidst the rumors and hearsay, Detective Hastings managed to find a glimmer of truth. Days turned into weeks, and the investigation delved deeper into the fabled Midnight Mansion. Each new discovery brought Detective Hastings closer to the enigma that hung over the estate like a dark cloud. As he pieced together the puzzle's final fragments, the truth became clear, revealing a motive rooted in envy and greed. At last, standing before the mansion's inhabitants, their masks slipping away, Detective Hastings confronted the culprits responsible for the mansion's haunting reputation. With steady resolve and undeniable evidence, the truth was laid bare. 
With justice served, the Midnight Mansion was no longer a place of mystery and dread. The air felt lighter, and the sun began to peek through the clouds as if celebrating the release from its shadowy past. The townspeople rejoiced. Grateful for Detective Hastings' tenacity and his unwavering dedication to uncovering the truth. From that day forward, the Midnight Mansion stood tall, now a symbol of redemption and second chances. It became a sanctuary for those seeking solace and a testament to the power of perseverance. Detective James Hastings left the mansion, his heart filled with satisfaction, knowing he had brought justice to a place trapped in darkness. As he walked away, the memories of the Midnight Mansion would forever remain etched in his mind. A reminder of mysteries solved and the resilience of the human spirit. The Enigma of the Timepiece Heist Part 1 The Mysterious Disappearance In the quaint town of Mysteria, renowned for its rich history and peculiar mysteries, Detective Olivia Smith had just begun investigating her most challenging case yet. The Mayor's Prized Possession A priceless antique timepiece had mysteriously vanished from the local museum. Olivia knew she had her work cut out for her as she delved into the intricate details of the case. She studied the museum's security footage, meticulously analyzing each frame for any hint or clue that might lead her closer to the truth. Hours turned into days, and yet, the mystery remained unsolved. Part 2 A Curious Visitor Just as Olivia began feeling disheartened, a peculiar visitor arrived at the police station. Mr. Arthur Hastings, an elderly man with a twinkle in his eye, claimed to have information regarding the missing timepiece. Intrigued, Olivia sat down with him, ready to listen. Mr. Hastings explained that he was once a renowned clockmaker known for his expertise in crafting intricate timepieces. Feeling connected to the stolen artifact, he had taken it upon himself to investigate. He shared a theory that the timepiece held a hidden secret, a map leading to a hidden treasure rumored to be scattered across Mysteria. Part 3 A Race Against Time Eager to solve the case and uncover the truth, Olivia teamed up with Mr. Hastings. They combed through historical documents, deciphering ancient texts and following cryptic clues left behind by previous generations. As they unraveled the secrets of Mysteria's past, Olivia and Mr. Hastings found themselves drawn deeper into a web of mysticism and adventure. The duo encountered ancestral riddles, navigated elaborate puzzles, and traversed hidden passageways beneath the town. Along their journey, they encountered enigmatic characters, each with their own motives and secrets. However, Olivia's gentle nature and patient investigation skills allowed her to gain their trust. Part 4 The Final Piece After weeks of tireless searching, Olivia and Mr. Hastings stumbled upon a long-forgotten underground chamber. Illuminated by ancient torches, they discovered the stolen timepiece resting atop an ornate pedestal. Excitement filled the air as they realized that the timepiece itself was the final piece of the treasure map. With the clock ticking, Olivia quickly deduced the missing artifact's locations, piecing together each clue from their previous encounters. It became evident that this elaborate heist was not just about wealth, but about preserving Mysteria's ancient heritage. Part 5 Unmasking the Culprit by following the clues, Olivia unveiled the mastermind behind the timepiece heist, the museum curator himself, Alan Sinclair. Desperate for Mysteria to regain its former glory, Alan believed that only by obtaining the hidden treasure could he restore the town's reputation. With evidence in hand, Olivia confronted Alan, calmly explaining that true restoration lies in embracing and honoring Mysteria's historical value. Not in stolen artifacts. Recognizing the error of his ways, Alan admitted his wrongdoing, vowing to lead the town towards a brighter future. Epilogue A Town Rediscovered The news of the solved case spread throughout Mysteria like wildfire. The townsfolk celebrated Olivia as a hero, appreciative of her unwavering dedication in protecting their history. Olivia learned that true detective work isn't just about solving mysteries, but also about fostering unity and preserving what makes a place special. Mysteria flourished in the aftermath, becoming known not just for its mysterious past, 
but for the warmth and kindness of its people. And at the center of it all was Detective Olivia Smith, a gentle yet determined force ensuring the town's secrets remained safe, waiting for future adventurers and detectives to discover. Shades of Deception Once upon a time in the vibrant city of Eldoria, there lived a brilliant detective named Oliver Moore. He possessed an unmatched ability to see beyond what met the eye, delving deep into the shadows to uncover the truth that lay hidden beneath. Oliver was admired by all. Known for his extraordinary knack for solving cases that left others stumped. One fateful evening, Eldoria was thrown into chaos when the prized possession of Lady Miranda, a precious jewel known as the Celestial Sapphire, vanished from her private vault. The entire city was perplexed. And the case fell into Oliver's capable hands. Oliver began his investigation by visiting Lady Miranda's estate. The mansion was adorned with opulence, filled with priceless art and stunning antiques. As he questioned Lady Miranda and her staff, it became evident that someone within the household was involved in this audacious crime. Days turned into weeks as Oliver meticulously scrutinized each piece of evidence. His experienced eye caught subtle discrepancies and concealed motives. He interrogated the butler, who appeared suspiciously evasive, and questioned the maid, who seemed oddly nervous. The closer Oliver got to the truth, the more elaborate the web of deception became. It became apparent to Oliver that the celestial sapphire was just a small part of a much grander scheme. Every clue revealed a secret world of corruption and deceit that lurked beneath the shimmering surface of Eldoria. With his unwavering determination and attention to detail, Oliver started gaining the trust of the city's underworld. As the investigation intensified, Oliver found himself entangled in a dangerous game of cat and mouse with a formidable adversary known only as the Phantom. The Phantom was a master of disguises and manipulation always managing to stay one step ahead of Oliver's pursuit. It was clear that the Phantom held the key to solving the mystery, but would Oliver be able to unmask this elusive criminal? With time running out and pressure mounting, Oliver's breakthrough came when he noticed a subtle pattern in the placement of the stolen jewels. He discovered that Lady Miranda had been unknowingly orchestrating her own downfall, manipulated by the Phantom through a series of cleverly placed clues. Oliver set a trap, inviting Lady Miranda and her staff to a grand masquerade ball, where he intended to expose the Phantom once and for all. As the clock struck midnight, Oliver revealed an astonishing revelation that left everyone at the ball in awe. The butler, who had been pretending to be devoted to Lady Miranda, was, in reality, the Phantom all along. He had orchestrated the theft of the Celestial Sapphire to gain access to a secret compartment within the jewel safe, containing classified documents that could ruin Lady Miranda and many others in the city. As the authorities apprehended the Phantom, Eldoria breathed a sigh of relief. Grateful for Oliver's unrivaled detective skills. Oliver's ability to see beyond what met the eye had once again triumphed over darkness, bringing a sense of justice to the city. From that day forward, the legend of Oliver Moore, the master detective, echoed through the streets of Eldoria. His long and arduous journey had proven that heroes could emerge even in the darkest of times, illuminating the path of truth amidst the shades of deception. The Curious Case of the Whispering Manor Once upon a time in the quaint town of Ravenhurst, renowned detective, Inspector Eleanor Ross, arrived to solve a perplexing mystery that had the entire town bewildered. The Whispering Manor, an old and eerie mansion located on the outskirts of town, was said to be haunted by the spirits of its previous owners. It was up to Inspector Ross to uncover the truth behind these ghostly whispers. As Inspector Ross stepped into the mansion, she immediately sensed a chilling presence. The air felt heavy, almost as if it was holding secrets. The grand entrance hall was dimly lit adding a touch of mystery to the already ominous atmosphere. Determined, the inspector pushed forward, ready to face any challenge that lay ahead. She began her investigation by exploring each room in meticulous detail. The library, once filled with leather-bound books, now held nothing but cobwebs and dust. 
The dining hall, where elegant parties and celebrations had taken place in the past, remained eerily empty. It was in the drawing room, however, that Inspector Ross stumbled upon her first clue. Amongst the faded portraits and worn-out furniture, a tattered piece of paper lay partially hidden underneath a bright red velvet armchair. Delicately, she unfolded the paper and discovered a cryptic message written in elegant calligraphy. It read, Listen closely, dear inspector. For the whispers, hold the key. Seek the truth where shadows dance, and secrets will be set free. Intrigued by the mysterious message, Inspector Ross focused her attention on the whispers that were rumored to fill the corridors of the Whispering Manor. She spent hours wandering through the hallways, paying close attention to the strange noises that seemed to echo from every corner. One evening, as the moonlight bathed the mansion in an ethereal glow, Inspector Ross stood in front of a seemingly ordinary bookshelf. The whispers grew louder, almost as if guiding her towards a hidden passage. She gently pushed aside a secret lever, causing the bookshelf to creak open, revealing a hidden room. Inside, she found a collection of old diaries belonging to the previous owners of the mansion. Each diary held secrets, confessions, and clues that began to piece together the tragic tale behind the haunting of Whispering Manor. It was a tale of love, betrayal, and ultimately, murder. Through her relentless pursuit of the truth, Inspector Ross uncovered a twisted plot masterminded by one of the mansion's former occupants. With her brilliant deductive skills and unwavering determination, she unraveled the web of deception that had shrouded Whispering Manor for years. In the end, justice prevailed, and the spirits believed to haunt the mansion finally found peace. Inspector Ross bid farewell to the manor. Knowing that her visit had brought closure and solace to a place once engulfed in darkness. As she left the Whispering Manor, Inspector Eleanor Ross carried with her the satisfaction of having unraveled the long-held mystery. The town of Ravenhurst could rest easy, knowing that their beloved detective had once again triumphed against the odds, proving that even the most whispered secrets can be brought into the light. The Enigmatic Case of the Midnight Heist Once upon a time in the bustling city of Claridale, Nestled between towering skyscrapers and winding alleyways, there lived a renowned detective named Samuel Drake. His sharp mind and relentless dedication had solved numerous perplexing cases, earning him a reputation as the city's finest detective. However, the one case that continued to elude him was the enigmatic midnight heist. It all began on a stormy night when the priceless Claridale Diamond, the city's most treasured jewel, was stolen from the grand mansion of Sir Reginald Worthington. The news spread like wildfire, igniting fear and curiosity among the city's inhabitants. The mayor, desperate for a swift resolution, summoned Samuel Drake to solve this perplexing mystery. Samuel Drake arrived at the mansion, his trusty associate, Amelia Morgan, by his side. As they studied the crime scene, Samuel noticed peculiar traces of unknown footprints leading to the window where the diamond had been kept. Determined to uncover the truth, Samuel and Amelia delved into the intricate web of clues, interrogating witnesses and seeking answers in the darkest corners of Claridale. Each interview shed light on a different facet of the heist, but the puzzle pieces refused to come together. Samuel sensed a clandestine organization behind the theft, operating within the shadows of the city. Little did he know, these criminals had their eyes on him. Aware of his relentless quest for justice, weeks turned into months, and the case grew colder. Samuel battled moments of self-doubt, but his unwavering determination propelled him forward. One rainy night, while studying a map of Claridale's underground tunnel network, he stumbled upon a connection that had remained unnoticed. It all pointed to an abandoned warehouse on the outskirts of the city. With Amelia by his side, Samuel carefully explored the dimly lit warehouse. Their senses heightened, they anticipated an imminent confrontation. Suddenly, a figure emerged from the shadows, a mastermind named Victor Kinsley, notorious for orchestrating elaborate heists across the country. Amidst an intense exchange of words, Samuel outsmarted Victor grasping the motive behind the heist. 
the Claridale Diamond was not the true target. It merely served as a distraction. A hidden underground vault within Sir Reginald's mansion concealed documents that would expose a corruption scandal involving influential figures across the city. With the truth unraveled, Samuel and Amelia heroically apprehended Victor, ensuring that justice would prevail. The stolen diamond was returned to its rightful place, bringing solace to the inhabitants of Claridale. As for the corrupt individuals exposed by the recovered documents, they faced the consequences of their actions. Samuel Drake's reputation soared higher than ever before, not solely due to his success in solving yet another complex case, but because his unwavering quest for truth had saved Claridale from the clutches of corruption. A city once shrouded in darkness now gleamed with a renewed sense of hope, knowing that justice was always within reach. And so, the tale of Samuel Drake, the detective who persevered through countless challenges, would forever be etched in the annals of Claridale's history, the enigmatic case of the midnight heist that showcased the power of resilience, integrity, and the indomitable spirit of one man. The Case of the Missing Necklace Detective Smith sat at his desk, staring at the files piled high in front of him. He had been working on the case of the missing heirloom for weeks now, but there was still no progress. The heirloom was a priceless diamond necklace passed down through generations of the same family. It had been stolen from a safe in the family's mansion, and no one knew who the culprit was. Normally, Detective Smith loved a good challenge, but this case was starting to wear on him. Every lead he followed seemed to be a dead end, and the family's constant bickering and infighting only made matters worse. He was deep in thought when his phone rang. It was the butler from the family's mansion, requesting a meeting with Detective Smith. The butler explained that he had overheard one of the family members discussing the heirloom with a suspicious character in the garden just before it was stolen. Detective Smith immediately made his way to the mansion, eager to hear the butler's story in full. As soon as he arrived, he was met with the usual chaos and drama of the family. But the butler quickly whisked him away to a quiet room where he could share his information without interruption. The butler described how he had overheard the family member talking about their financial troubles and wondering if the diamond necklace would be enough to solve them. The suspicious character had suggested stealing it and selling it on the black market. The butler remembered the man's face and was able to provide enough detail for a police sketch. With this new information, Detective Smith was finally able to piece together the clues. He narrowed down the suspects and eventually found the thief, apprehending him and retrieving the priceless heirloom. In the end, the family was grateful to Detective Smith for solving the case and bringing the necklace back home. And as for Detective Smith, he realized that even the toughest cases could be solved with a little patience, persistence, and the help of a reliable source like the butler. The Enigma of the Whispering Shadows Once upon a time, in the heart of a bustling city, there lived a renowned detective known as Arthur Holmes. His reputation for unraveling even the most perplexing cases had earned him the respect and admiration of the entire community. One stormy evening, a peculiar mystery would emerge, capturing the attention of Holmes like no other. As the rain cascaded outside, Holmes sat in his dimly lit study, lost in thought. Suddenly, a knock echoed through the grand oak door. Startled, he rose, welcoming the visitor into his sanctuary. A tall, elegant man named Mr. Somerset stood before him, his face adorned with a mix of anxiety and curiosity. I am in need of your expertise, Mr. Holmes, Mr. Somerset began, his voice saturated with urgency. There are strange occurrences happening at my estate, known as Whispering Shadows Manor, and I fear they may be tied to an ancient curse spoken of in family folklore. Intrigued by the mention of a curse, Holmes graciously accepted the case. They embarked on a journey into the heart of the countryside. Reaching the foreboding Whispering Shadows Manor, the house stood prominently, its intricate architecture cloaked in mist. Their investigation began by questioning the staff, who whispered tales of unexplained phenomena lurking within the walls. Doors mysteriously creaked. 
Objects floated seemingly of their own accord, and eerie whispers echoed through the halls. It was clear that something otherworldly haunted the manor. Determined to uncover the truth, Holmes set up his arsenal of detective tools. He scrutinized every inch of the mansion. Studying dusty books filled with cryptic symbols, cracked mirrors revealing fleeting shadows, and secret passageways hidden behind paintings. As days turned into nights, he tirelessly pieced together the fragments of the puzzle. One evening, as Holmes delved deeper into his investigation, he discovered a hidden underground chamber. Inside, he found an ancient journal belonging to the original owner of the estate. Its faded pages detailed a tragic love story that culminated in a bitter curse placed upon the manor for generations. With newfound knowledge at hand, Holmes deduced that the curse could only be broken by reuniting the lost lover's souls, torn apart by fate and time. Committed to lifting the curse, he devised an elaborate plan. Inviting the entire staff and Mr. Somerset to the grand ballroom, Holmes revealed the gripping tale of forbidden love and the curse that entangled whispering shadows matter. Hearts filled with both hope and trepidation as the detective outlined his plan to bring peace to the spirits that roamed the halls. As the clock struck midnight, Holmes orchestrated a peculiar ritual, guiding everyone through the labyrinthine passages. The haunting whispers grew louder, harmonizing with the sounds of breaking chains. A spectral presence materialized before their eyes, it was the ghostly apparition of the tormented lovers. With bated breath, Holmes implored the spirits to release their hold on the manor. Moved by his words, the lovers embraced, their ethereal forms merging into one. Moments later, a tranquil silence settled over the haunted estate. Days turned into weeks. And the strange occurrences ceased entirely. Mr. Somerset expressed his endless gratitude, forever indebted to Holmes, for saving his family legacy. The once dreaded whispering shadows manner now stood as a symbol of love triumphing over darkness. And so, Arthur Holmes, the detective extraordinaire, added yet another victory to his string of triumphant cases, leaving behind a legacy of unwavering justice and compassion. The Mystery of the Missing Diamond Detective Jameson had been working on the case for weeks. It was a long and grueling investigation. But he knew he was getting closer to finding the culprit. The case involved the theft of a priceless diamond from the local museum, and Detective Jameson had been tasked with finding it before it was too late. The first lead came in the form of a witness who claimed to have seen a suspicious figure lurking near the museum on the night of the theft. Jameson followed up on the lead and managed to track down the suspect. However, after a thorough interrogation, it became clear that the man was not involved in the crime. Days turned into weeks, and Jameson was starting to lose hope. That was until a tip-off from an anonymous source led him to a rundown warehouse on the outskirts of town. Upon investigation, Jameson discovered a hidden room filled with stolen goods, including the missing diamond. But the thief was nowhere to be found. Jameson scoured the evidence left behind in the room and pieced together a profile of the culprit. They were highly skilled and had likely been pulling off jobs like this for years. It was at this point that Jameson received a call from an unknown number. The person on the other end claimed to have information regarding the diamond theft. Jameson was skeptical, but decided to follow up on the lead. He arranged to meet the caller in a secluded park on the outskirts of town. When he arrived, he found a figure shrouded in darkness waiting for him. The person handed over a file containing incriminating evidence against the thief. The evidence led Jameson to a wealthy businessman who had hired the thief to steal the diamond as part of a larger scheme to acquire valuable jewels from around the world. With the help of the file, Jameson was able to apprehend the businessman and recover the stolen goods. Finally, the mystery of the missing diamond had been solved and justice had been served. Detective Jameson knew that his persistence and hard work had paid off once again. The Enigmatic Case of the Midnight Heist Once upon a moonlit night in the bustling city of Ravenport, Detective Lucas Bloom found himself embroiled in what would become the most enigmatic case of his career. 
Known for his sharp intellect and unwavering determination, he had earned a reputation as the go-to for perplexing mysteries. It all began when a valuable artifact. The Moonstone of Serenity vanished from the heart of Ravenport's Museum of Mysteries. The puzzling theft left everyone astounded, as the artifact was heavily guarded and displayed under the watchful eyes of intricate security systems. As the lead investigator, Detective Bloom delved into the depths of the crime scene with utmost diligence. He meticulously examined the museum's surveillance footage and interviewed the staff, but each clue led to a dead end. The thief seemed to be an illusion, melting away without a trace. Days turned into weeks. And Detective Bloom grew increasingly frustrated. The pressure mounted, both from the relentless pursuit of justice and the expectation of the city's skeptical inhabitants. However, he remained calm and retained an unwavering belief that the truth was within his grasp. One evening, while roaming the dimly lit streets of Ravenport, Detective Bloom noticed a peculiar pattern. Every time there was a full moon, a series of seemingly unrelated robberies occurred. Banks, high-end jewelry stores, and libraries were all targeted. Determined to connect the dots, Detective Bloom decided to investigate these cases further. He discovered that each robbery took place at the stroke of midnight, leaving behind nothing but handwritten notes taunting Ravenport's finest. The notes were filled with cryptic riddles and puzzles that seemed impossible to solve. Undeterred, Detective Bloom embraced the challenge. With each full moon, the detective's reputation grew. The people of Ravenport marveled at his brilliance, eagerly awaiting his next move. As the cases piled up, Detective Bloom began to recognize a familiar pattern in the puzzles and riddles left behind. After countless sleepless nights and tireless effort, the detective deciphered the final riddle. It led him to an abandoned warehouse on the outskirts of Ravenport. With his heart pounding, he cautiously entered the decrepit building, prepared for whatever awaited him within. Inside, surrounded by moonlit beams streaming through the cracked ceiling, Detective Bloom discovered the cunning mastermind behind the string of robberies a reclusive but brilliant puzzle enthusiast named Amelia Moonwood. Her vast knowledge of riddles and puzzles had allowed her to outsmart even the most advanced security systems, making her the perfect thief. In a dramatic confrontation, Detective Bloom confronted Amelia, revealing his meticulous deductions that had ultimately led him to her. As the truth unfolded, Amelia confessed, she had orchestrated the robberies as an elaborate game, seeking a worthy adversary who could match her intellect. Impressed by Detective Bloom's unwavering pursuit of justice, Amelia agreed to return all the stolen artifacts, including the coveted Moonstone of Serenity. The city rejoiced at the recovery and celebrated Detective Bloom's triumph. From that day forward, Detective Lucas Bloom became known as the Guardian of Ravenport, the detective who could solve even the most perplexing mysteries. His gentle demeanor, combined with his relentless pursuit of truth, made him a beloved figure in the city. The enigmatic case of the midnight heist had tested Detective Bloom like never before. But through patience, wit, and unwavering dedication, he unraveled the tangled web of mysteries that had clouded Ravenport's skies. And so, a new era began, full of hope. For both Detective Bloom and the city that had come to cherish him. The puzzling case of the missing heirloom. Detective Samantha Thompson was a seasoned veteran on the police force, but her latest case had her stumped. The wealthy owner of a grand estate had reported that one of his most prized possessions, a centuries-old family heirloom, had gone missing. The heirloom was a shimmering gold amulet with a precious ruby at its center, and it was worth millions of dollars. Samantha arrived at the estate to investigate the theft. She interviewed all of the workers on the property and searched every nook and cranny of the estate. But she found no signs of forced entry or any clues leading to the culprit. The owner was distraught and demanded that Samantha find the amulet immediately. The detective decided to widen her search and began to dig into the family history. Starting with the grandfather who had originally acquired the amulet. 
she discovered that the grandfather had made a deal with a local fortune teller to use the amulet to bring good luck to his business ventures, but the deal had gone sour. The fortune teller was never paid for her services. And she had cursed the amulet to bring misfortune to those who possessed it. Samantha realized that the amulet was not just a valuable object, but a cursed relic with a dangerous past. She concluded that the owner's son, who had been experiencing financial troubles, must have stolen the amulet in an attempt to sell it and escape his debts. Samantha confronted the son with her findings, and he admitted to taking the amulet. He claimed he didn't believe in the curse and thought that he could make a quick profit from selling it. However, he also revealed that he had been experiencing strange accidents and mishaps since he had taken possession of the amulet. Samantha advised the owner to keep the amulet locked away and never to let it leave his sight. She closed the case with a warning about the curse and a recommendation to destroy the cursed amulet, but the owner refused to part with it. As Samantha left, she wondered if the curse was real or if it was just a coincidence that the heirloom brought misfortune to those who possessed it. The case may have been solved, but the mystery of the cursed amulet remained unsolved. Shadows of Deception Once upon a time, in the bustling city of Havenbrook, renowned detective Alice Hawthorne found herself entangled in a web of intrigue that would challenge her skills like never before. Known for her sharp wit and unwavering determination, she had earned the respect of both colleagues and criminals alike. It started on a foggy evening when Alice received a mysterious letter at her office. The anonymous sender claimed to possess information about a long-lost treasure hidden within the city's darkest secrets. Intrigued, Alice decided to delve deep into this enigma, knowing that danger lurked around every corner. Her investigation led her to a forgotten mansion on the outskirts of town. As she stepped inside, the air turned heavy with suspense, while shadows whispered secrets only they knew. Alice explored the labyrinthine halls. Following the faintest traces of clues left behind by those who came before her. In her pursuit of the truth, Alice encountered a cast of eccentric characters, each with their own motivations and desires. There was Edgar. The eccentric scholar with an encyclopedic knowledge of Havenbrook's history, Victoria the elegant socialite with a masked agenda, and Samuel, the reclusive artist who seemed to paint more than just masterpieces. Each encounter added a layer of complexity to the mystery, leaving Alice to question who she could trust. As Alice dug deeper, she unraveled a trail of corruption, deceit, and betrayal that ran through the heart of Havenbrook. It seemed everyone had something to hide, and the treasure she sought was not as simple as gold or jewels. It held the key to exposing a hidden network of crime that threatened to compromise the very foundations of the city itself. With every step closer to the truth, danger grew fiercer. Assassination attempts and false leads became commonplace, but Alice pressed on. Determined to bring justice to a city drowning in darkness. Her tenacity and unshakable resolve inspired those around her, rallying support from those who believed in her cause. In a final showdown, Alice confronted the mastermind behind the treachery that had plagued Havenbrook for years. The villain, driven by greed and power, revealed their true face, desperate to protect their wicked empire from crumbling. But Alice, armed with her intellect and the strength of her convictions, would not falter. In a thrilling display of wits, Alice bested her adversary, exposing their crimes and restoring hope to the people of Havenbrook. The treasure she sought was not a material possession, but the restoration of justice and the triumph of truth over deceit. As shadows of deception dissipated, Havenbrook began to heal. Alice Hawthorne The brilliant detective emerged as a hero, forever etching her name into the city's history. And so, her legacy endured, reminding all that sometimes, the greatest treasures are not easily measured in riches, but in the change they inspire.